The scene is set for playoff football in central Illinois. For the second straight year, Pekin starts the postseason at home, entering as just one of three undefeated teams in Class 7A. Their challenge, the 5-4 Plainfield Central Wildcats, who blew out back-to-back -back opponents to clinch a postseason appearance. From Memorial Stadium in Pekin, Illinois, it's the 7A IHSA football playoffs on Clutch Sports Media. Good evening, everybody, and welcome into Pekin. Alongside John Camosa, it's Larry Larson in with you. Glad you're with us. And, John, you may think it's 9-0 versus 5-4, but the records go out the window now. They certainly do, and this is when it gets enjoyable. Records off the table, playoff football, fresh start. This is going to be exciting any time they start off the playoffs. Speaking of excitement, Pekin's offense has been thrilling all year, and it starts with two guys who could crack the 1,000-yard rushing mark in Tanner Sprecher and Kanye Tyler. Yeah, Sprecher and Tyler have been dynamic this year all season long. They have not slowed down one bit. And let's not forget, Scotty Jordan also has Bo Benassi out there at wide receiver. They are just a multi manic team. A very dynamic offense, to say the least. And as for Plainfield Central, Robert Keene, their head coach, said they hang their hats on defense. And it really starts with two guys, Philip Carlton at linebacker and Zane Zadie up on the line. Yeah, Coach Keene said Carlton is one of the best players he's ever coached defensively. He's all over the field, big on uh, a lot of defensive plays. And he's also getting offers from Mount Union, a Division Three power who's won 13 national titles. Speaking of titles, the road to Champaign starts right now. Playoff football coming up next on Clutch Sports Media. down to book your bathroom remodel and be entered to win our drawing. We're doing a big giveaway to kick off our new remodeling division, Home Enhancements by Mushanti. The first 10 homeowners to book their bathroom remodel will be entered to win tickets to the Bears versus Packers game December 4th at Soldier Field. Now is the perfect time to tackle that home renovation project with our 0% financing options. Call today to schedule your free estimate. Let's go Bears! And we welcome you back live into Pekin, and it is a raucous crowd, Joko. And as we take a, a deeper look here, it's going to be a really, really deep home field advantage for Pekin tonight, not just because of the crowd, but also because of the road that Plainfield Central had to travel to get here over two hours. Yeah, I mean, they had to come a long way, and you're coming into a hostile environment. As you can see below us, Larry, this home crowd is full. These fans are excited. I don't imagine a whole lot of people in the town of Pekin that are staying home tonight. They want to pack this place, and they certainly did. And we do thank those who stayed home and are tuning in on Clutch Sports Media or CIProud.com. And, of course, all this coverage brought to you by Zach Butler State Farm and Peoria Area State Farm agents. Coin toss coming up, Joe Coe, so we'll find out who's – going where to start but in the meantime keys to the game in your opinion I, I think at least one for Plainfield Central has got to be a quick score yeah that's that's going to be big and they want to get that momentum early you look at both of these defenses as, as well Plainfield Central they pride themselves on defense they only allowed 16 points to teams around their conference and then Pekin on the other hand only allowed 15 points per game so this is going to be a defensive matchup Pekin's going to want to come up there and disrupt that with their dynamic duo and Kanye Tyler and Tanner Sprecher. Their dynamic duo, but, I mean, if you look up and down this Pekin roster, John, you could even say it's the dynamic triplets or the dynamic quintuplets or whatever you want to call it because their offense is just so strong. Yeah, you look at Scotty Jordan at quarterback. He's that veteran leader out there. You look at Bo Benassi. So many different wide receivers up and down. Connor Martin. And outside of just the running backs, look at Miley Henson. You know, great kicker there, has made so many extra points this year. Pekin is just a well-rounded team, and that's why they are 9-0 going into this Class 7A opening round. 
Pekin Mid-Illini Conference champions. Plainfield Central out of the Southwest Prairie East Conference. They were champions last year. This year they struggled a little bit at the start, but Joko, they are on a tear going into the playoffs. Look at that strong finish. They outscored their opposition 89-6 to in the last two games and to win in the last week and clinch their playoff appearance. They beat Joliet Central 48-6. to Yeah, it was big. And, you know, for Plainfield Central to close it out as strong as they did with that defensive effort and then turned it on the Jets on offense, they're coming into this game against a really good Pekin team with some momentum on their side, especially having to make the trip. We'll see how this game unravels. But, you know, they're going to come out here and get a test. We know that Pekin's got a target on their back, but the Dragons want to come out and perform. Listen to these fans, and the game hasn't even started yet. You see those fans on your screen. Plainfield Central's traveled fairly well for a two-hour trip, Joko. Yeah, they have, and going back to your point, Larry, don't, you know, that, that crowd noise is not going to subside all night, especially if the Dragons are scoring, but this is going to be a ruckus crowd, and they brought a great fan base on hand. Plainfield Central wins the toss and elects to defer. So Pekin will receive the opening kickoff. Kanye Tyler and Connor Martin back deep. Chris Baker, the junior kicker, will boot it away. This is what you play for, Joko, and it all starts right now in Class 7A. Glad you're with us as we are officially underway in the state playoffs in 2022 in Pekin. It's going to be an exciting matchup. Can't wait for this one. Baker can wait, apparently. <laughs> Taking his time. Now we're ready to go. Line drive kick up the middle. It will be fielded by Connor Martin. And the junior is off to the races down past the 30 to open things up. Almost broke an extra tackle. That got the crowd into it. Martin with a great return to start to open this game for the Dragons. And here comes this peak in offense, John, that we've talked about so, so much at the top of the show. Starting quarterback, a senior, Scott Jordan. You look across the line, almost all seniors from left to right. Senior receiver in Bo Benassi and senior running backs in Kanye Tyler and Tanner Sprecher. It's Sprecher lined up behind Jordan in the pistol. On the fake jet sweep, it's the give to Sprecher, and he's busting one long right out of the gate. Down the sideline, past the 40, past the stiff arm, bumped out of bounds towards the 15. And how about a start for Tanner Sprecher? Wow. That's one way to get the crowd fired up. Always a big play threat. Opposing coaches have likened him to a human bowling ball. Yeah, the way he just bounces right off tacklers. He wanted to bring that one back to the house to start this game. Just about did. Tanner Sprecher to the sideline to get a breath. Who comes in? Kanye Tyler, who's second on the team with 870 rushing yards entering action today. The two pretty much split reps evenly in the peak and backfield. Plainfield Central showing blitz. Tyler plunges into the offensive line. And he's down after a gain of a few. Second down coming up. And that's exactly what we were talking about, Larry. You get Sprecker with that big 68-yard run. You give him a breather on the sidelines, and you run Kanye Tyler right up the middle. Kanye Tyler, who's gotten some looks from even Power 5 schools as an offer out from Illinois State, an FCS program. A sought-after senior. Tyler again. Tyler using his legs and carrying a man into the end zone. Just like that. Touchdown, Pekin. He wasn't going down on that one. Steam heads his way forward. Able to get the touchdown. What a start for Pekin.
Didn't need anything fancy on that drive, Joko. Big run, and then two runs from Kanye Tyler. Miley Hansen on for the extra point. And the first girl football player in Pekin history sends it straight through, and it's seven, nothing Pekin. We want to take a short break to remind you of our great sponsors tonight. Starting with Zach Butler State Farm in Pekin. Give him a call, 309-347-3115, or visit him online at sfbutler.com. And we want to thank all our wonderful State Farm agents from around the Peoria area for making our live free coverage possible all season long. Jody Brown in Peoria, Zach Butler here in Pekin, and Jake Weston over in Washington. Right out of the gate, Pekin with a very quick touchdown. Kanye Tyler with his 17th rushing touchdown this year. And now it's up to Plainfield Central to respond. And John, in a game like this, in a hostile environment, you have to respond. Oh, you certainly do. And you look at how loud the crowd got into that one. And Plainfield Central, they got to come out here and try to get some of that momentum back and make a statement on offense. But that is a you know, tough start on defense. Pekin ran it right up the middle there. Miley Hansen with a good kick down past the sideline. And it's picked up and quickly ruled down as Michael Kabori, Kabor rather, stumbled on it and had nowhere to go. So not only is Plainfield Central behind early, but they're deep in their own territory. Yeah, got a lot of field to work with here and talked about how sound Pekin's defense has been, especially up front and in the secondary. See if Plainfield Central has an answer, but they have some playmakers on their team as well. Namely, Chase Veda, the senior quarterback. He can make a lot of things happen, Joko. You look at him on tape. He's a threat with the legs, but also can throw the deep ball. Yeah, he's very athletic, well-rounded, just like Scott Jordan from Peak, and also running back Malik Jasm. Very talented back there, the sophomore. Starting in the backfield, it's Abram Zimmerman, the senior behind Veda. Officials not ready yet, and it's a delay of game. And that's going to be another key for Plainfield Central, Joko, if they want to stay in this and if they want to win. Can't have much of that. No, and we talked about that earlier in the week, Larry. Playoff football comes around. Got to limit those penalties and mental mistakes. First and 15. Zimmerman still in the backfield. Fake jet sweep. Throw out wide. That's complete to Colby Williams. Fighting towards the sideline. No, that's not Williams. No matter who it is, that's a first down for Plainfield Central. That arm you talked about, though, Larry, fires it right over there, gets him open, able to get a couple extra yards and out of bounds. Quentin Howard was the receiver who hauled that one in to move the chains. Promising start after the delay of game. Play action. Veda out wide. It's a screen to Zimmerman who picks up three. And he likes to throw to the back there, Zimmerman. But early on, Plainfield Central looking to air it out. And why not, Joko? You got to come out and make a statement just as Pekin did. You do. Head coach Robert Keane in his second season at the helm. The Wildcats program that has had a dramatic turnaround over the last handful of years. Second and nine, gain of just one on first down for Zimmerman. Man in motion, DJ Pearson. It's a give to Zimmerman this time. Trying to carry Shaman Handigan with him. And he's not going much of anywhere, third and long. He can fly and able to get up there, make the stop. And He's been so productive doing that during the regular season in the middle. I I able to stop some of the area's top talented running backs. Early on, Pekin's defense trying to make a stop. Third and eight coming up. If you're playing field central, run or pass? I think you go for the pass. Passing game has worked early. 
for Chase Veda and company. Three receivers set. Veda out of the pocket, looking for options. He's chucking it deep, and he has Williams at the 40. The seniors hook up for a big gain and a third down conversion. Larry, you talked about that athleticism. We saw him throw in the pocket, but now Veda elects to roll out, heaves it downfield to a wide open Williams. What a catch. The big play that Plainfield Central needed. First and 10 at the 38. Williams staying in there at the top of your screen. Zimmerman. Stuffed by the defensive line led by Braden Beckham, the senior for Pekin. That's one thing that's so exciting about the playoffs, especially opening round. You throw the records out the door, but you also throw the seeds out the door. Anybody can beat anybody. Plainfield Central saying, we belong to be here. They're trying to come out and make a statement. Plainfield Central playing a very competitive schedule. In the Southwest Prairie Conference. They have struggled against playoff teams. 0-3 in the regular season against playoff teams. Some movement, and it's a false start. It looked like DJ Pearson jumped a little bit early. And similar to that first play, you, know, you get downfield, you get a big play. You don't want to hurt the momentum there with a penalty, which it does. Moves him back just a little bit. We're getting our first look in the backfield at Malik Jassim who head coach Robert Keane pointed out has really stepped up in the second half of the season. Just a sophomore making a huge impact. He's behind the quarterback, Veda. Fake jet sweep to Williams. Veda looking long again. Kulinowskis can't bring in the jump ball. That was great defense there by Houston, able to knock it down. They were going for that home run ball. Pekin didn't want him to have it. And Kulinowskis is a deep threat. He's brought down a lot of those balls throughout the course of the year. And pivotal points of all games for Plainfield Central. We'll see if they can pick up another big game. Third and 14. Veda throws it to the sideline. So fourth and long. This is a punt situation if you're in the regular season, but maybe you think twice in the postseason, Joko. Yeah, and Veda's taking a call over there from Coach Keen. Looks like they're probably going to stay on the field. You see Pekin doing a really good job of reading those deep passes, able to disrupt, and now they're going to change their mind and go for the punt. And they got a hustle. Play clock winding down. Chris Baker, the junior kicker, back out. Baker boots it away. Kanye Tyler will not get a chance as that rolls right at the 10-yard line. A beauty from Baker. Yeah, it was. Rolls out of bounds, and Beacon's got a lot of field to go now. But Plainfield Central offense looked good, able to get down there, just can't get those couple big plays to go, and that's credit to Pekin's defense, able to disrupt some of those pass plays. Pekin's defense withstanding a few early tests. There's Doug Nutter, Dragons head coach in his 15th season, second straight year, hosting an opening round playoff game for Pekin. Undefeated at 9-0, one of just three teams in 7A. Unbeaten. It was quite the accomplishment in itself. First time he can finish 9-0 in 21 years. First and 10 from Pekin's own 10. Sprecker gets past one tackle, but not many more. Brought down by a gang of white jerseys. Mason Smith, the junior backer in there. And I love the energy that Tanner Sprecker brings to the game. He, he said in an interview, he doesn't want to run away from me. He wants to run right at you. And that's certainly what he's done. A guy who is not afraid of contact at a position where you can't be afraid of contact. Kanye Tyler in there now. Tyler looking for some space on the outside. Cuts it back. 
and he's tumbled down just short of the 25. Good tackle from Jamal Thompson, the senior linebacker. Enough for a first down. And John Early, we have not seen Scott Jordan throw a ball yet. No, we have not. They've been keeping the ball on the ground. It seems to be working. It certainly did on that first drive, but we'll see if they mix it up a little bit, go to the air, try to catch Plainfield Central off guard. Opening round of the 7A playoffs, third seeded Pekin against 30th seeded Plainfield Central. There's Sprecher again, busting another one. Bowls over a man, brought down at the 40. You know, just as we were talking about it. Why throw the ball when you, you have a literal human bowling ball in your backfield? He can just go get the first down for you. Works out again. First and 10 from Pekin's 39. It's been ground and pound for the Dragons. Sprecher stays in, and a flag flies. We'll see what the call is. False start for Pekin. After a big run, penalty there, but Dragons look to keep their composure. And Larry, right now the ground game has really been working for the Dragons early on in this first quarter as they just continue to run Tanner Sprecher. First and 15, fake to Sprecker. There's a throw to Kanye Tyler. Has a block on the outside and gets a good chunk of that yardage back. And John, that's where Kanye Tyler can be a sneaky threat when they split him outside with Sprecker still in the backfield. Yeah, they think they're going to Sprecker and then Kanye Tyler gives you that quick pivot. Jordan able to fling it over there to him, picking up some extra yardage. And that's where Taylor, or I should say Tyler, can be so dangerous as a wideout. Just short of 200 receiving yards on the season. No fake this time to Sprecker. He takes it right up the gut to move the chains yet again. Round and pound and continue to run that clock. And Joko, if you're Plainfield Central, at some point do you sell out on a blitz? Yeah, you might have to. I mean, right now, Pekin's full control on offense, able to have their way downfield. Plainfield Central really hasn't had an answer for either Tanner Sprecher or Kanye Tyler. This time, Jordan will pass. Climbs the pocket. Has Tyler wide open for six. One time he goes to the air long. There he is, finds his man, Kanye Tyler. Another peak and touchdown. Two scores, two Kanye Tyler touchdowns, and it's all peaking early. Hanson made her first extra point. She's 52 for 57 on the season. She's got a year left, too. High snap, doesn't matter. Hanson two for two, and Pekin two for two on scoring drives. As the crowd just continues to get fired up here at Memorial Stadium, but well, what a start for Pekin, and what a start for Kanye Tyler. Holy cow. I want to take a moment to thank our sponsors, Zach Butler, our presenting agent today, right here in Pekin. Give him a call, 309-347-3115 for all your insurance needs. It's Zach Butler, State Farm at sfbutler.com. And we want to thank all our good neighbors from State Farm around the Peoria area, Jody Brown, Zach Butler, Jake Weston, neighbors in your community. Give them a visit or a call on the numbers on your screen. Hanson back out for the kickoff, Joe Coe, and looking towards the Plainfield, side, uh, Plainfield Central side of things here. We talked about a key response after that first score, how it feels even more urgent. Yeah, it does. Now you find yourself down two scores. They had a really good start offensively and then turned the ball over, was forced to punt, or I should say was forced to punt. Now you really have to get downfield to score. 
Line drive kick deep. It's muffed by Howard. He recovers, and he's lit up at the 20. An impressive effort from Pekin special teams. And Larry, that's the second time now that Hanson was able to kick the ball, get those little bounces, and they kind of juggled it back there. Doesn't help the receiving team for Plainfield Central. Not picking up a whole lot of yardage. First and 10 for Plainfield Central from the 22-yard line. And Joko, looking at that first drive for Plainfield Central, 58 yards. It wasn't too shabby, but you got to end these drives with points. Yeah, they moved the ball downfield in a hurry, but Pekin's defense, that secondary, was not going to give them the big play. Jet sweep to Colby Williams. Has some blockers and gets a good chunk on first down. Well, there's no question that Plainfield Central certainly has the speed at running back and wide receiver, but Pekin secondary, their linebackers and defensive line just reading those plays really well. It's interesting to see these two offensive approaches, Joko. For Pekin, it was really all run, 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 and then that played to their advantage by opening it up with the pass. I think you could say the opposite for playing field central. Heavy pass on that first drive, maybe now the run game opens up. It's back-to-back -back runs, this time Zimmerman. Pass the sticks and then some. Well, especially now, you know, being down 14 zip, it's more of an urgency. We gotta come out here, we gotta get to the line quick, get set, start throwing some passes around field, making those big plays. Beacon is not the team you want to beat down 14 0 too early on. They can make you pay. Just under five minutes left in the opening quarter. Thanks for joining us on your Friday night. Everything you play for right here. First round of the 7 8 playoffs. Wildcats down early. They're not going to go down without a fight, but Veda goes down. Designed quarterback run. Wasn't going anywhere. Austin Pyro stuffs it, but a flag is down after the play. See if that one goes against Pekin or Plainfield Central. And we await the call. Looks like it's moving up. It's a personal foul against Pekin. And John, you always wonder when those flags fly after the play, what was said. I didn't see anything, but obviously verbal comes into play. Yeah, it does. And those are other things that are in your control that you can clean up. You don't want to give away those penalties. Ball past midfield now, first and 10 from the Pekin 47. Veda. Almost picked off by Tyler. Was looking for DJ Pearson. And Kanye Tyler nearly had his second interception of the year. He's already had two touchdowns on offense. Almost had an interception on defense. Quite the first quarter here for Kanye Tyler. Making an early bid for player of the game. <laughs> yes, he is. They say big players do big things in big games. I think he's certainly shown yeah. that tonight. <laughs> Just a little bit. Still early. Plenty of football left. Zimmerman tries the stiff arm, and it gets him a few extra, extra yards before he's escorted out of bounds by Aiden Houston. Third and medium here, and we've seen Plainfield Central convert a few long third downs, so this is well within their range. See if they elect to go to that pass again. They did last time they were faced with a third and short situation. Especially with those three wide receivers left. Throw to the sideline and he finds his favorite target in Williams for another first down. I think it's safe to say that Colby Williams with those two catches have been highlight reel so far. Williams a senior with good athletic ability and he's one of a handful of guys that could go on to play in the next level from this Plainfield Central squad. 
Yeah, there's a lot of talent up and down this roster. They're showing that right now. And to get some of that confidence back early on being down, you know they want to get an end zone right here. Much of their offensive confidence lies in that passing game. Another pass. It's Goder with his stiff arm. Cuts back inside, keeping the legs moving with his back towards the goal line. Gets the first down. Kind of has his own man help him for some extra yards, too, as he flings him out of bounds. But they are moving the ball right along. And there's an injured dragon down on the play, Joko. That's Connor Drowns, the senior cornerback, who has been highly effective all season. Three interceptions, 30 tackles entering action. But he's down on the field and in some pain. Yeah, not what you want to see. Hope he's okay. One of the playmakers for Pekin all season long, especially in big middle line A games, had two interceptions against Dunlap, was big against Washington, and this is a player you want in your postseason matchup. Brown still down on the field. And it looks like they're tending to one of his legs. Hard to get a super close look. But this gives both Plainfield Central's offense and Pekin's defense a breather as this drive really starts to pick up steam. Yeah, it's, it's picking up. They are getting downfield in a hurry here. And Plainfield Central in better position to try to get a touchdown. But it's going to take a lot to get through that Pekin defense. But right now the passing game has been strong for Chase Veda and company. Connor Drowns up to his feet. Heavily favoring his right ankle. And John, you feel so bad for a guy like that. A senior going down in a first round playoff game. The least ideal time to get injured. Yeah, you look forward to this all year. You go undefeated. You win the conference. First round of the playoffs. And you're helped off in the first quarter. Not what you want to see. And he can't put any pressure on that right leg. So Connor Drowns is out at cornerback. Pekin will have to dig into its reserves a little bit. Ramez Watson comes on. Back to action, first and 10 for Plainfield Central. Their second drive. Veda looking to the sideline, has Godert again, hauls it in, inside the 10, towards the goal line, reaches in, and he's down. Almost got his way in there, just a little bit short. Joko, it looked like there was a body underneath him. I'm not entirely sure he was down. No, I, I don't think so from our angle. It looks like he was on top of the defender and threw his... Arms over, but. Plainfield Central into the heavy set. Mason Smith, the linebacker in. And the handoff is stuffed. They're going to DJ Pearson, who gets a lot of carries in goal line situations, but he couldn't find the goal line there. Well, now you're faced with a situation where they just stuff you there. Do you try to go to the air on a really short situation? Third down. Second down and goal. Flag flies before the give to Philip Carlton. And a flag. And it's offsides against Pekin. So that's going to move Plainfield Central even closer. Half the distance to the goal. Replay second down. Second down and goal. Carlton. And Pearson are the backs. Carlton with the carry again. Ball came out, it looked like. But Carlton hangs on. And third and goal is forthcoming. It's peak in defense, bending but not breaking, Joko. I was going to say, Larry, how strong has this front line been? They will not give him an inch. Veda up the gut to Smith. Third tries the charm. And Plainfield Central is on the board. 
not only is third time a charm, it really is though. They had to run three different backs out there in Zimmerman, Williams, and then finally get in with Smith there. A surprise attempt for two. The legs are churning and he's in. DJ Pearson with the sneak and the two point conversion and now it's 14 to eight. Don't count out the Wildcats just yet, Joko. That's exactly what they needed. Yeah, and I like the idea to go for two there. Just goes to show you, hey, we can get the end zone back-to-back -back plays. They do. A little bit of confidence now and momentum with Plainfield Central. Pekin's got to come out here and make another statement on offense. This Plainfield Central squad is, is not one that's going to come in and go quietly into the night, if you will. This is a team and a program that fought its way back, Joko. Looking four years ago when this class of seniors were freshmen, they went one and eight. Last year, they went eight and one in the regular season, and now they're back in the playoffs, back-to-back -back appearances for the first time since 2007 and 2008. There's no question they battled adversity and overcame. Now in the postseason, taking on a ranked Pekin team, and Certainly making it a game early on. This has been an exciting one. Baker, pop-up kick. Caught and wrapped up by a gang of Wildcats. Robertson brings in the kick there. And on kicks like that, you can't try to do too much. Houston Robertson brings it in. But Pekin with a bit of a short field. So with that risk, a little bit of reward for Pekin. Yeah, we'll see if they keep it on the ground. It's been certainly working for the Dragons so far. We have a ball game now after that touchdown. They start from their own 39. Man in motion, fake to Martin. It's Sprecker with the first down carry. Trying to keep his legs moving even on the ground, Joko. And I think that kind of displays his mentality pretty well. Yeah, we've seen him throughout the year, and that's one player. He will just go through you, go around you, go over you. And he just gets those extra chunk yardage, able to break tackles and just pull guys with him. It's, it's very impressive. Tanner Sprecker. Over 1,000 rushing yards. Entering action. Gets it again. Gets another first down. Hauled down at the 45. Sneaking up on the 100 yard mark tonight already. And Joko, we've got a quick injury update for Peak and our sideline reporter Gavin Russell reports Connor Drowns injured his ankle. It's a possible broken ankle on his right leg and he is doubtful to return. Kanye Tyler. Doesn't have any space on the outside. That's not what you want to see if you're peaking such a huge part in that secondary. Change the dynamic of the defense. Under a minute to go. Quarter number one. Kanye Tyler with two touchdowns. The two scores for Pekin. Scott Jordan out of the pocket for really the first time tonight. Chucking it long. Almost had Dominic Brown. That was quite the throw there from Jordan, right on the money, just about right off the fingertips. But how talented is Jordan throwing on the run like that? Almost had another huge touchdown pass. So that brings up third down and nine. Definitely a, a passing down in distance, you'd say. And he hasn't targeted Bobanassi yet. He's got a lot of speed over there. You can see him on the left hand side. Or Kanye Tyler. Bo Benassi, Scott Jordan's favorite target and Pekin's leading receiver. Ramez Watson in motion. Jordan, pump fake to Tyler. Instead has Watson on the wheel route and he drops it. Had him wide open. Makes it fourth down and nine. And that will bring out the punt team. 
led by Luke Goss, the junior, in what could be the last play of the first quarter. Talking with Doug Nutter yesterday before their practice, he said the number one goal for, their, for them, their number one key was take care of the football. And I think that probably applies to catching passes like that. Yeah, those are those big plays you have to make because he went right past the secondary, wide open. That would have been six. Quinton Howard, who does have a kick return touchdown this year, gets up right near it. Did he touch it? Pekin saying that he did. That's and the officials say no. That was awfully close, but. Probably a little too close <laughs> to com for comfort. Howard might hear about that one on the sidelines. But with 9.9 .9 seconds remaining in the opening quarter, Plainfield Central is pinned up in its own territory. Jace Veda and company back out there with the opportunity to tie the game on this drive or take the lead. After trailing 14-0 early, Veda from his own end zone has some space on the outside. He's bumped out of bounds by the cornerback, Hermes Watson. He tries to keep it and run. A lot of speed there for Veda. He can picks it up. Chase See if they go back to the air. That's where they've been most successful. Got to keep an eye on Colby Williams having a big night. Central's got to hurry up. Play clock winding down. Williams at the top of your screen. Veda out of the gun, gives it to Zimmerman, and he's wrapped up. And that's the final play of the quarter. Pekin with an early 14-8 lead thanks to two touchdowns from Kanye Tyler. Back after this. The time is now. Parkside Fitness in Pekin has everything you need to get started, stay motivated, and reach all your health and wellness goals. Take advantage of our expanded fitness equipment areas, group fitness classes, and sports activities. Stop in for a tour today. Parkside Fitness in Mineral Springs Park. Find your fun with the Pekin Park District. Veterans Memorial Arena isn't just the place for skating lessons, but boys and girls can learn how to whip, flip, and boogie with tumble dance programs. Find your fun and register online at pekinparkdistrict.org. Welcome to the grand opening of the new Uftering Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. With a state-of-the-art showroom and display, comfort and convenience like never before, and a team of professionals ready to go to work for you. Don't miss the grand opening of the new Uftering Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in North Pekin. Welcome back to Pekin, and if you're a sucker for a good moon, this is the place to be tonight. Clear skies and playoff football is the forecast tonight in Pekin. Larry Larson, John Camosa in with you. Glad you're with us. Pekin with an early lead over Plainfield Central. Two touchdowns for Kanye Tyler as Pekin jumped out 14-0, but Plainfield Central with the chance to tie or take the lead. They've got a long way to go, though. Third and nine, pinned up against their own end zone. Chase Veda. Out of his own end zone, and he's swallowed up for the safety. Ball is out. And it is a safety. Braden Beckham got there first. They lost the football. They almost thought they were getting out of that with a touchdown, but two points will do just fine. Pekin, huge defensive play. Braden Beckham, the senior defensive lineman who only plays one way, got a rushing touchdown last week in a blowout win over East Peoria. This week, he collects a safety. Who says big guys can't score? He wants to join in on the action. And John, that really turns the momentum after Plainfield Central's stop to get the ball back before that drive, it really felt like they had a grasp on momentum. Yeah, not only that, after the safety, you know how it goes, they get the ball right back. A chance to continue to run that football. And Larry, all the momentum with Pekin right now. 
So Pekin will get the ball back. Chris Baker ready to boot it away. Kanye Tyler and Connor Martin back deep. Certainly two threats. Yes, they are. A lot of speed back there. It falls short of both of them. And the return is past midfield for Pekin. So they will set up shop with a short field. It was Elijah Hart to bring that one up. And I think we're going to see Pekin probably come out and just keep running that football with Tyler and Sprecher. It's going to start with Sprecher in the backfield. First and 10. From Plainfield Central, 45. Scott Jordan and company starting things off in a tight formation. And a give to Tanner Sprecher. And this time he's not going anywhere, and he's tackled for a loss for the first time tonight on his seventh carry. John, he's at 99 yards. That'll bring him back a few. But knocking on the door of 100 yards already. That's something we typically haven't said throughout the regular season. Sprecher, tackle for loss. <laughs> you, you see him just pick up gain after gain, and that's a big stop there for Plainfield Central. But what a start for Sprecher. Sprecher with no touchdowns, but those 99 yards don't look too bad. Fake pitch. Here's a look to Bo Benassi. Can't get it through contact, but he draws a flag. Pass interference coming up. It was Kabor in coverage, but too much coverage. Yeah, that's one of those plays he's backpedaling. You got you to gotta catch up with Benassi so fast. And he just kind of falls into him to get that unfortunate pass interference call, but it's going to definitely benefit Pekin. We await the official call. Sticks haven't moved yet, but you can only assume it's pass interference on the defense. Looked like a lot of contact. Yeah, it definitely was. It'd be very surprised if this isn't called pass interference. It is indeed pass interference. And Joko, of course, we want to remind our viewers at home, maybe you're used to watching pro football. High school, it's a yardage penalty rather than a spot foul. So 15 yards on the pass interference call against Kabor and the Wildcats. First and 10 from the 32. Sprecher swallowed up at the line. Gage Leffler. The junior defensive end got there first. And Sprecher almost three or four defenders on him trying to bring him down. He still just wants to push through, and he is tough to bring down. Second and seven. Sprecher still in there. Instead, it's a pass in and out of the hands of Connor Martin. Third down, fourth coming. Yeah, second drop there from Pekin we've seen. Right on the money from Jordan, just came out a little quick. Joko, we, as the game has progressed, Pekin has opened up their playbook a little bit more on every drive. We'll see what they open up here on third down and seven. Jordan, pocket collapsing. It's a screen to Benassi over the middle, into traffic. Brought down short of the sticks. The senior linebacker, Philip Carlton, who we mentioned at the top of the show, with the big fourth down tackle. Head coach Robert Keane said he's one of the best players he's ever gotten to coach. Such a great defender, playmaker for this Plainfield Central team. Really the leader out there. A guy that can get in on a lot of tackles. Fourth down and two, the hard count got him. And Scott Jordan's more fired up than we've seen him all night. Anytime you're faced with the fourth, fourth down and short, you don't even have to run a play to get the first down. You just get it with the penalty on the opposing side. He can will certainly take that. It 
It is indeed first down Pekin, as the crowd tells you. Sprecher chugs along down inside the 10 for another first down. First and goal. How about Mario Bruno there after the slide by Sprecher jumped right over him. Sprecher again, this time looking for the outside. Cuts back towards the end zone. Touchdown. John, we don't have the stats at our disposal, but I wish we could see how many yards after contact Tanner Sprecher has, because he has a lot. We had about four or five guys that dove on his back there in the end zone, and Sprecher finds the end zone for his first touchdown, but what a drive for Pekin. Hanson on for the extra point. Flag flies beforehand. So the play is waved off. False start against Pekin, so that'll back him up five yards. Worth noting that Hanson has not tried a field goal this year, so that penalty brings this back more towards field goal range. But Hanson has shown that she's got plenty of leg. The soccer star awaits her a second attempt, and that one is good. More distance, no problem, and this home crowd in Pekin is all kinds of fired up. And we take this opportunity to remind you and thank our great sponsor, Zach Butler State Farm in Pekin for all your insurance needs, home, auto, life, you name it. Give him a call, 309-347-3115 or visit him online at sfbutler.com. And our coverage all season long, not just the playoffs, but from week one all the way until maybe Champagne. who knows? Our coverage brought to you by our good neighbors around the Peoria area. Jody Brown in Peoria, Zach Butler here in Pekin, and Jake Weston over in Washington. Joko, a really compelling game here, even though it is a three seed against the 30 seed. Plainfield Central showing a lot of life, but this is another one of those points where you say they need to show something on offense. Yeah, you have to, and he can scores again. Plainfield Central, a little bit of a hole, but the Dragons are sticking to their game plan, just round and pound, also mixing up a little bit, put it out in the air, and every bit of that has paid off so far. Hanson's kick towards the sideline. Howard dances past one tackle, but not another. Elijah Hart wrapped him up. So, Joko, we've seen Plainfield Central's offense do a lot of different things tonight. What do you come out with here on first and 10 from your own 26 in another must score situation? This drive right here, I would continue to throw the ball. You got to air it out. You have to have that big play downfield. They're capable of doing that. You have to find some type of break through this peak in defense, which right now the Dragons have been so solid. Trips left for Chase Veda. Out of the gun. Zimmerman in the backfield. Zimmerman. Nowhere to go. And it's just a defensive line that's so tough to run through. And I will make note, Larry, it looks like Drowns is back on the field there after that energy injury. Connor Drowns back out. He was doubtful to return, but he's back out on the field at the top of your screen. Play action. It's a screen to Colby Williams. Connor Drowns right in there, and he bumps him out of bounds, but a flag is down. That's just that playoff mindset saying, we're at home, opening round game, even after the injury, he's gonna come right back out there and then in on that tackle. Unbelievable grit from Connor Drowns. You mentioned it, you don't wanna miss postseason games. Personal foul. A face mask against Pekin. It could have been against Connor Grounds. Doesn't matter who it's against. It moves the chains either way. I think that's what you call making your team the top priority. You go out there and lay it all on the line despite hurting a little bit. Like you said, Larry, just that grit and that toughness from Grounds. Yeah. 
First and 10. Pearson in motion. Veda out of the pocket. Chunks it. And it's caught out of bounds by Godard. A valiant effort. Joko, that looked like a throwaway, but Godard didn't give up on it. Robert Godert making himself a factor tonight. That was awfully close to getting that one foot down. It's just going to be a little bit too far to the sidelines, but like you said, Larry Veda on the run, still able to get a decent throw off. Watching his tape before the game, I was impressed. I'm sure you were impressed at his ability to really extend plays, but his arm has been so accurate even on the run. He's very athletic. Not too phased back there getting pressured. Still able to get good throws off. Throws left. Has Williams incomplete, though. And again, that looked like it was going to be enough for another first down. Time and time again, Veda has gone to Williams when the Wildcats have needed a big play. And they need another one here, third and ten. Well, as we were saying before the the drive started you know they certainly haven't been shy going to the air they're trying to look for that big play to get some of that momentum in there chip away at this deficit it's gonna have to come soon three receivers set with a tight end Williams Play action, throw over the middle. Godert, wide open, one man to beat. It's a foot race. And Godert is brought down short of the end zone. Cam Hodgson chases him down, but Robert Godert comes through again. First and goal. What a throw right on the money to Godert. Good job by Eakin's defense to get that. Put him just short. But we've seen Plainfield Central face this situation right on the goal line last time, ran it right up the middle there. Mason Smith, number 17, the back in the center, had that first touchdown. This time he doesn't get the carry. And the carry goes to Phillip Carlton for the touchdown. And Plainfield Central won't go away. Now this is a resilient bunch right here at the Wildcats. They get down two scores, come right back down the field and get a big touchdown. Another two-point attempt. DJ Pearson stopped this time. So the score remains 23 to 14. Another incredible drive by the Plainfield Central offense. Back to break it down after a quick word from Uftring. Welcome to the grand opening of the new Uftering Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. All this month, we're dealing on rows of jaw-dropping Jeeps for Jeep Adventure Days, serious Dodge muscle, and new Ram trucks are tough as nails. Don't miss the grand opening of the new Uftering Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in North Beacon. Wildcat student section fired up. Maybe a little new life after their senior running back and linebacker Philip Carlton punches it in. Plainfield Central responding after peaking safety. Yeah, it, you know, not only does Plainfield Central, uh, Plainfield Central have a really good passing attack when they get in those short down situations at the goal line, they play that smash mouth football, ground and pound, just like Pekin. That's the second time it's paid off here for the Wildcats. Now it's going to be up to their defense, and their defense is really their calling card. As we've mentioned throughout the broadcast, head coach Robert Keane mentioned that to me as well. Their defense has been the pride of the program this year in addition to the explosiveness of the offense, but Plainfield Central entering action having allowed just under 17 points per game this year. Pekin has exceeded that. Kick here goes to Connor Martin. Martin busting another long one. Still on his feet on the far side. One man to beat, and he beats him. No flags. Connor Martin to the house. Well, if you want to come back and respond after a touchdown from your opposing team, how about that? 
Our offense doesn't need to take the field. I'll run it back myself. Tanner Sprecher told me yesterday that opposing teams have stayed away from Kanye Tyler all year, but as a result, Martin's gotten more opportunities and he makes the most of it there. Like a lightning strike. Kind of swings the door wide open. Hey, we'll focus on Tyler. Connor Martin says, okay, I'll take it back to the house. Peekin doing a little bit of everything tonight. Two touchdowns from Kanye Tyler, a safety from Braden Beckham, now a kick return touchdown from Connor Martin, getting the job done in all three phases. Larry, I think it's safe to say like a volume dial, this crowd noise has only continued to get louder and louder. They love seeing these peaking touchdowns. They love seeing their peaking dragons. Every time we've come here this season, it seems like the home side is filled up. The Middle Illini Conference in Central Illinois is a conference that's very passionate, but this peaking fan base is the largest, biggest school in the Middle Illini, and they're showing it tonight. It is, and they came out in full force. Great student section. Pretty much the town mixed in here. Everyone coming out to see the hometown Dragons tonight. Might have to close some local businesses a little early. And just to give you an idea, Joe Coe, I was driving through Pekin yesterday after I visited Pekin practice, talking to Doug Nutter, and I drove by the Arby's, and it said, good luck, Dragons, playoff bound. Even Arby's showing a little support. The church right in front of the Arby's also had a sign supporting Pekin, so certainly a, a mixed bag. Everybody showing their support of their undefeated football team. Quentin Howard can't take it to the house, but a respectable return sets up the Wildcats offense. And we're posed with the question again, how do you respond if you're playing field central? Or central? They did it last drive. Can they make another big play happen again? We will see. But if I'm the Wildcats, I continue to go to the air. It's been working for them. Plainfield Central with 146 passing yards so far tonight. Outpacing Pekins, 65. First and 10 from the Central 29 yard line. If you like action, this is the ball game for you. Zimmerman. Tried to cut back, and Shaman Handigan said not so fast. Gain of a few on first down. Yeah, Pekin's front line has been reading those runs really well. Able to get in there and make another stop. I think they just try to mix it up with the run or two and then predominantly keep it in the air. Heavy set stays in for playing field. Lone receiver is Kulikowskis. Veda keeps it himself. Hit at the line. Gains one or two, but third down and medium is coming up. And John, what that play call tells me is that Coach Keen has a lot of confidence in not only Chase Veda, but his entire team to convert on a third and five, third and six scenario. Yeah, it does. And you, know, you have to build that confidence in a postseason game. He wants to put his team out there and show them they have what it takes. Right now it's gonna take another big play. Veda finds his favorite target in Williams. Has to make a man miss and he can't. Brought down just short of the sticks by Aiden Houston. So it'll be fourth and maybe two. I think you go for it here. Yeah, I, I would certainly go for it. We will see what they elect to do, but. It's looking like they might. They are in their own territory, and they are going to bring in that heavy goal line set. Smith and Carlton in the backfield with Pearson. Give up the gut, it's Smith, did he get there? I don't think he got there. It's gonna be close. We await the call. Pekin thinks they have it. They do. They're gonna measure. 
Oh, that was close. You almost initialed that it was going that way, but if any play was as big on defense, if Pekin is able to get this ball back, that defensive line has been solid. This is going to be a very crucial play here for the Wildcats. The chain gang gets its time to shine. The watching eyes of Pekin. And it's short. The Dragons defense rises to the occasion. And if there's one thing that Central doesn't want to see, it's that high-powered Pekin offense back on the field again, up 30 to 14. First and 10 from the Plainfield Central, 39. Now it turns into a must stop for the Wildcats. There goes Sprecher. It's hard to stop him. He moves the chains on first down. He has just been a force tonight in the backfield for the Pekin Dragons. Well past the 100 yard mark. Up to 130. Flags fly before the snap. No flag. It's a timeout for Plainfield Central. And we'll take this time out to remind you of our great sponsors, as I almost dropped a water bottle out the window. Pardon the quiver in my voice. That'll strike some fear into you. I want to thank Zach Butler State Farm here in Pekin for all your insurance needs. Home, auto, life, water bottle. I don't know if that's covered. 309-347-3115 or at sfbutler.com. All our good neighbors around the Peoria area making tonight's broadcast possible. Jody Brown in Peoria, jodybrownagency.com. Zach Butler, mentioned him in Pekin. And Jake, Wash, Jake Weston in Washington. Mr. Washington, some might call him, at jakewestoninsurance.com. Thanks for joining us on your Friday night. ClutchSportsIL.com and CIProud.com. Glad to be teaming up with WMBD in Peoria. Halftime show coming up. Gavin Russell, Jonathan Michael, and company will go over some halftime scores. Other action around the area and around the state here in the first round of the playoffs. Scott Jordan gives to Tanner Sprecher, and that time he's bottled up. Philip Carlton in there. Just continuing to keep that on the ground with Sprecher. You know, Pekin would love to have another touchdown here. Sprecher again. That time well past the line. Bowls over one of his own men for the first down. I think that's a first. You know, surprisingly, even that didn't slow him down. Ran into him full speed and still able to stay on his feet. Sprecher out. Kanye Tyler in. Tyler with two touchdowns tonight. Gets the first down carry. Jets up the middle. Did he get the first down? Just short. Robert Godert up from safety to stop Tyler. And it is a first down. First down and goal. Tyler, he got through that offensive line in a hurry. Jordan calls out the call. It's Tyler stuffed in the backfield. Philip Carlton with the hit of the year. I think that's why 13-time national champion Mountain Union's looking at Carlton. What a hit. Multiple D3 offers for Carlton. Somebody call a D1 school for this young man. How do you do? <laughs> Got him right at the line. Put all of his body into that one. Good to see Tyler okay. He's to the sideline. Sprecher back in. Heavy set. Sprecher weaving back and forth. Brought down short of the goal line. There was Carlton in on the tackle again on defense. 
Quarterback keeper, it's Jordan. Rarely see him use his legs in situations like designed quarterback runs, but a goal line sneak or two, definitely not out of the equation. That didn't get the job done, so it's fourth and goal. Safe to say you go right up the middle with Sprecher. We'll see if John Camosa turns into Tony Romo. What's the play call from Doug Nutter? Braden Beckham in at fullback. It's to Sprecher, and he gets the job done. 36-14 Dragons. I think anybody in the stadium probably could have assumed that one was going to go in the hands of their star running back. But oh, don't, don't try to be too humble now, Joko. I'll, I'll own it. I'll, I'll take the one <laughs> for one there. Hanson on for the extra point. The hold good and the kick is also good. Inside the left upright. 37 to 14. And the third seeded Dragons showing everybody why they're state ranked and one of the three undefeated teams in the class. Joko, now we ask the question yet again. Plainfield Central, how do you respond? I mean, now you're really in a hole. I mean, after that run back, it was one thing, but now you add on another touchdown. You just got to keep going out there and try to chip away, but Pekin's defense has been locked in. And Larry, this is a Pekin team that during the regular season was averaging 44 points a game. They're at 37. We still got three minutes to go in the second quarter. It's been an impressive outing. They've been impressive all season long, and if this is your first time watching the Peak and Dragons, this is kind of what it's been like around Central Illinois. Dragons' reign of terror continuing tonight, but we do mention lots of time left. 3.06 remaining in the first half. Plainfield Central will receive the second half kickoff, and with their offense as explosive as it's been tonight, you can't rule them out yet. Now, still a lot of game, and it's the playoffs, so. They're not going away just yet. Quinton Howard gets another chance. Finds the sideline and he's roped down. Blake Youngren. And Larry, to your point, I don't think necessarily it's so much just responding with touchdowns. It's after you score, how do you really put a stop to this peak in offense? They haven't had an answer for Tanner Sprecher all game long, and that's going to be a tall task for any team. Definitely will be. There's a good reason that this team is 9-0, Joko, and so often in football, it's such a team sport. You can't, it takes more than one. And Pekin has far more than one. Kanye Tyler, Tanner Sprecher, Bo Benassi. Scott Jordan, playing field central, plenty to counter with. Veda counters down the field, but he overthrows Godert. Had him wide open again. It seems like a few times he's gotten lost in the peak in defense. Yeah, he had him right there. He's got to take it down a little bit. Would have been right in his hands, but those are those big plays. You almost got to hit him right on the money. Those are touchdowns. He had nobody around. They certainly haven't shied away for going for the deep ball. Second and 10. Two backs in the backfield. Jet sweep to Williams. Gets a nice gain on second down. Third and medium. A lot of different plays in the playbook that can be effective here. And one thing that stood out to me about Plainfield Central's offense is how many different weapons they've employed on offense. A little behind the scenes, we've got spotting boards and rosters that we kind of form into offensive formations. I've run out of room for the amount of names we've had to write down. Robert Godert being one of them. Godert in the slot, Williams in motion, Veda down the middle, can't get to Godert. 
batted away by Cam Hodgson. Great defensive effort there. As you can see, Larry, as you mentioned, they're so deep in this lineup. They have a lot of speed, able to get downfield, and Pekin's done a nice job of reading some of those routes, able to disrupt them. Fourth and five, will the punt crew come on? They're thinking about it, and it will. And that's fair enough. You don't want to roll the dice too much at your own 38 within two and a half minutes until halftime. Kanye Tyler will return. Chris Baker boots it away. Nearly blocked by Braden Beckham. Was it blocked? Might've, I think that was tipped. Yeah, might have been. And... Bit of a muted reaction from the crowd, but Braden Beckham got a fingertip on that. He's doing everything tonight. He is, and they're going to have good field position on this one. He can still with two minutes in the second quarter. We've seen how quick they can drive downfield. They've got all three timeouts. And two minutes and two seconds. At times, it's only taken one play. Sprecker charges forward before being slammed down by Joel DePulzer. DePluzer, rather, excuse me. Second and five, and that keeps the clock moving. We'll see if Pekin takes a deep shot here, Joko. You think you take that risk? Yeah, I mean, it's not out of, out of the question here. Just keep it on the ground and play it safe. Sprecker hit in the backfield and plowed down. Daniel Hollis finishes that play. Now I would probably go for the deep ball third down, roll the dice, extend that lead even more if somebody gets open, but. Well, it'd be a no-brainer if there was more time left on the clock. Yeah, you don't want to give, you know, if they don't convert, turn the ball back over, Plainfield Central can still get down there. They've had some big plays that were off the mark by just a little bit. Third and seven. And Pekin takes its first timeout. And we will step aside for a brief timeout. Welcome to the grand opening of the new Uftering Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. With a state-of-the-art showroom and display. Comfort and convenience like never before. And a team of professionals ready to go to work for you. Don't miss the grand opening of the new Uftering Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in North Beacon. Welcome back to Pekin. It's all Pekin so far, 37 to 14, but that score may be not indicative of the action that we've seen in this game, Joko. No, not at all. It's been back and forth. You know, Pekin has the upper hand. This is an extremely talented Plainfield Central team that's not going to go away. They're still putting up a fight. But Pekin, they really want to try to close the door in this first half. Hard count. Jordan from the gun. Rolls out. Chucks it long. Looking for Ramez Watson. And it falls harmlessly to the turf. Fourth and seven coming up. And here comes Pekin's punt crew. So you're under a minute here. Not a lot of time for Plainfield Central, but they're going to get the ball back. I think they've got to take some shots. Yeah, I would just continue to go to the air. And, you know, not just those slant routes. I would continue to go deep. They've had some guys open that made it, missed them off the mark just a little bit that have been open. So if you can catch one of your wide receivers open, and cut into this deficit and then get the ball back, anything can happen. Luke Goss, the punter and backup quarterback, sends that one into traffic. And it's a risky, risky catch. Made by Godert. So Plainfield Central will set up in its own territory. John, about this Plainfield Central program, we talked about it earlier, but they're making back-to-back -back playoff appearances for the first time since 07-08. And they've turned it around from finishing 1-8 and eight in 2019 
that says so, so much about those kids pulling this program from the depths. You have to you know, come together as a team, say, how do we respond from this? Only one win, you turn it around, you get to the playoffs for a consecutive year, you're playing some of your best football. First and 10 from the 25 for Chase Veda. Looking towards the sideline, now looks towards the other sideline. Can he get it to Kulikowskis? Yes, he can, and Doug Nutter is bowled over. Is it a catch? No, it's not. And even Coach Nutter's hitting the deck with his team. Glad to see he's all right, but came in there quick off the sideline. And Larry, that's another throw we've seen from Veda throughout this game that they're just off the mark a little bit on the sideline, can't quite keep their feet in bounds. But what I think is important there, Joko, so often you hear this on college and NFL broadcasts, the throws are his guy or nobody. It's either incomplete or his guy makes the catch. No interception. Godert in motion. Second and 10. Play action. Veda overthrows Zimmerman on the screen. And those are the little things that you cannot afford to do with the score the way it is in the spot that we're at. Yeah, need to connect on those big plays. Try to get the ball downfield. Go back to those goal line runs that you were having, but it's going to start with getting down there again. Right now, Pekin's defense in the secondary able to give a lot of fits to the Wildcats. Empty set backfield. And a timeout for Pekin. Might as well talk things over. 27 seconds left in the half. Dragons likely won't get the ball back, but in case you're wondering if you're a Plainfield Central fan or maybe even just a, a football fan around the area thinking, okay, what's with this Pekin team? Well, they've been doing stuff like this over the last handful of games. Look at that. 247 to 43 is how much they've outscored their opponents in the last four games of the regular season. And they've only had two games decided by two scores or less. And so then that leads you to the question, okay, well, who have they played? Pekin has played four playoff teams. Belleville East, five and four. Dunlap, five and four. Washington, six and three. And Metamora, also six and three. We should add that they really dispatched Metamora 55 to 13 back on September 30th. So definitely not much of a slouch of a schedule for Pekin, but they will be challenged in this postseason. Empty set out of the timeout. Veda, eluding pressure. He's gonna need to throw on the run and he throws it away. Aiden Houston thought maybe he could have an interception there. Not meant to be. And fourth down is coming up. He can, might have one more shot at it, but I like to assume if they punt the ball here, they just get it back and take a knee. Or give it to Tanner Sprecher, and you never know what could happen then <laughs> based on the <laughs> results tonight. You definitely could do that as well. That's not out of the equation. Or run one back. You know, there's lots We've also of seen that, or, or maybe Kanye Tyler. Yeah, he's, he's got two he's, touchdowns. He's back there. Pekin's got an arsenal. <laughs> they got a, a lot to work with here. That's what we're getting at, if you haven't noticed. Talent deeper than the Arby's menu. Line drive, punt, and a sliding catch is made, and Pekin will start at the 45. John, you had any Arby's lately? I have not, but now that you bring it up, you know, curly fries don't sound bad right now. We do not have the meats. But we, we do have a football broadcast for you. Wonder if there are any good folks at the Peak and Arby's tuned in tonight. If there are, let us know. 15 seconds left in the first half, and Pekin's going to spread it out. Kanye Tyler at the top of the screen. Dragons going for the jugular before the half. The throw zipped. 
past the reach of Ramez Watson. And kind of an unfortunate break there for Watson. Could, you could see he lost his footing and tripped up. Might have been there had that not happened, but we'll see if Pekin tries to go to the air one more time with 10 seconds left. 10 seconds left here in the first half, and we want to remind you that we will have a halftime show. Gavin Russell, Jonathan Michael, part of our fantastic crew, will host that halftime show. They're going to report scores from around the area and around the state, so stay tuned here on CSM and CIProud.com. Low snap. It's a jet sweep to Connor Martin. Sheds a tackle before he's ripped down by Carlton at the 40. And a timeout is taken by Pekin. I, this sends a message. Yeah, they really want to come out here and make a statement. And I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing at all. You got two seconds. Why not? You know, go into halftime with a secure lead already. That adds some more. I, I like the idea. Well, that's one thing that Doug Nutter and the rest of this Pekin squad said yesterday before practice. You don't take anybody or anything for granted. And Pekin is not taking this 37 to 14 lead for granted. Why not try and add more with Plainfield Central receiving the second half kickoff? Yeah, to me, this isn't running the score up if you get a touchdown. This is saying how much Plainfield Central is respected. They know that this game is still within reach for the Wildcats with how well their air attack's been. So Pekin wants to put themselves up safe, but right now they still have that lead. They just want to try to go for the end zone one more time here in the next two seconds. Plainfield Central might have to put up a season high in points to win this ball game, but you never know. Prevent defense, Scott Jordan climbs the pocket, chucks it long, batted down. And that ends a huge first half for the third seed at Pekin Dragons. Two touchdowns for Kanye Tyler, a touchdown for Tanner Sprecher, a safety for Braden Beckham, and a kick return touchdown from Connor Martin highlights an outstanding effort for Pekin. It has, they had everything working on offense and defensively as well, just making some big stops, but so many weapons up and down this roster for the Peak and Dragons. Sprecker, Tyler, Martin, Scotty Jordan, it has been incredible so far. It has been incredible, and we're glad you're spending your Friday night with us for the 7A first round battle in the IHSA playoffs. We'll step aside for a brief break. When we come back, it's the halftime show with John Michael and Gavin Russell after this on CSM. Find your fun with the Pekin Park District. Veterans Memorial Arena isn't just the place for skating lessons, but boys and girls can learn how to whip, flip, and boogie with tumble dance programs. Find your fun and register online at pekinparkdistrict.org. Are you ready to choose your future? Get hands-on training. Take off in your career in as little as nine months. Ready? We are. Choose your future. Change your life. Midwest Technical Institute. It's time for the big fall clearance sale at Vonderheide's, and that means up to 80% off balance rolls and remnants. That's huge. Plus, you'll get 18 months interest refinancing and free installation on select carpets. When you visit Vonderheide's showroom, you can register for your chance to win an awesome backyard fire pit. With carpet as low as $1.18 a square foot, you cannot miss this huge fall clearance sale. After more than 75 years, Vonderheide's is still the place to go. Be the first down to book your bathroom remodel and be entered to win our drawing. We're doing a big giveaway to kick off our new remodeling division, Home Enhancements by Mushanti. The first 10 homeowners to book their bathroom remodel will be entered to win tickets to the Bears versus Packers game December 4th at Soldier Field. Now is the perfect time to tackle that home renovation project with our 0% financing options. Call today to schedule your free estimate. Let's go Bears! 
The time is now. Parkside Fitness in Pekin has everything you need to get started, stay motivated, and reach all your health and wellness goals. Take advantage of our expanded fitness equipment areas, group fitness classes, and sports activities. Stop in for a tour today. Parkside Fitness in Mineral Springs Park. Hello and welcome back to Pekin Memorial Stadium where the home Dragons lead Plainfield Central 37 to 14 here at the half. Thank you for joining us here at the halftime report. I'm Jonathan Michael. Next to me is Gavin Russell, my trusty broadcast partner. And Gavin, what a action-packed first half it was. We saw everything, and that's something that we've been accustomed to seeing while we're here at Pekin. Yeah, Pekin has provided us with so much action this season, but in this game, there's been no shortage of it. And just kind of roaming the sidelines, kind of getting to feel out just the you know action at game level, it's been nothing short of exciting. So what you're seeing on the broadcast, it is that exciting here in person. I got to say, Doug Nutter and his group are fired up. The coaching staff, like Larry was saying, you know they know Plainfield Central has enough to be able to come back in this game. So they want to continue pounding. They want to continue pushing forward. And they are continuing to be fired up throughout this game. Certainly, and that may explain why Pekin was loading up their wide receivers all the to the outside, trying to get another score before halftime because you can never be too sure in the playoffs because you know, one loss and you're out. But Pekin doing all that they can to maintain this large lead, which has been due to many different factors like Kanye Tyler, Tanner Sprecher, Connor Martin, the big kick return, Braden Beckham forcing the safety. It's just been countless people. Yeah, no, you can name so many off. And again, your usual suspects of Kanye and Tanner, Scotty Jordan and company making things happen. But everybody's making things happen. Braden Beckham on the safety. I mean, everybody is contributing for this peak group and I think especially when you get to the playoffs of course you can play the style of chip away get some good scores kind of play methodical football a that's not very exciting though and B that's not gonna win you a state championship you have to be able to make big plays and you gotta create your own momentum that's what Pekin's doing right here showing why they are one of the best in 7a Pekin the number three seed in class 7a but Gavin I know that there is a player on Plainfield Central who's really impressed you in the first half their passing game has looked pretty good for the most part a couple good throws and a couple long throws as well that have really been catalysts in helping get them set up in Plainfield Central's two scores. Yeah, they've been going to the air attack quite a bit and they're you know, not afraid to pass. Still in the high school game very much. It's a little uncommon to see pass heavy teams, but Plainfield Central knows they need to utilize the entire playbook to be able to get back into this game. Uh, Robert Goddard has been the guy that's been making a lot of plays among many others. There's so many that you can name. Uh, they're falling behind a little bit right now. They're having trouble on defense, but they've had no shortage of their big plays as well. Trading blows there early on and then just kind of fell late in the half. But again, as we saw, things can change in a hurry. I wouldn't put it past Plainfield Central to get back into this game by the time we head into the fourth quarter. Certainly, Plainfield Central has looked good. Pekin has just looked a little bit better. That's why they hold a 37-14 to 14 lead. But Gavin, I want to ask you, you were down on the sidelines for the entire first half. And what did you kind of see down there? Like, just give me a summary of what all you saw. I know you were right there when Connor Drowns came back off the field, but he got right back out into the game in the second quarter. Yeah, so that one, it definitely looked like he hobbled off. They had to help him off. Could not put weight on that right leg. And Drowns is one of those guys that maybe isn't the forefront of, of the Pekin team like so many others. He does a lot of the little things, though, and, and contributes in so many ways. So he's a big player to lose. From the athletic trainer, I, it's his words, not mine. Thought he may have had a broken ankle or uh, leg, something to that effect. But he got up off the table, walked around on a little bit got it back into the game kind of quickly and you know, that shows some real grit even if it isn't a broken leg or anything he definitely is showing a lot of determination to get back into this game uh, otherwise though the energy is remaining high I mean the crowd it's almost been deafening down there I mean you've got all these thousands of people screaming and cheering and just going crazy for their dragons tonight I can barely hear myself think down there the student section has been wild and Doug Nutter sporting the fire red Jordan threes is a nice touch although he did take a few tumbles tonight, so might need to clean them <laughs> off tomorrow. Definitely, Doug Nutter took a little bit of a hit on the sideline from a Plainfield Central receiver. I believe that was Godert. So a lot of action that you're seeing down there on the sidelines, Gavin. But we will take a quick break and come back with more 
Actually, no, we'll, we'll stay here. Believe it or not. Well, ha Gavin, how about we go through some scores from around the area? Let's do that. Lots of big, big games. The first one I want to lead off with is in Class 7A. The winner of this game here tonight in Pekin will face the winner of this one. And Normal Community, 6-3 and three in the Big 12, they lead Hananiga 30-7 right now. Ironman up big on the team that defeated Pekin in the playoffs last year. Well, we know the Ironmen are no joke, and what a battle that would be between two 7A schools from Central Illinois, normal community, and uh, Pekin going at it. That would be something else. I mean, Onondaga is a really good school, and again, last year they played Pekin, took Pekin down. I think sounded to me, talking to a couple of Pekin players, they may have almost wanted to face Hananiga to get back at him a little bit. But either way, I think no matter who ends up winning that game with normal community with the lead, it's going to be an exciting matchup. It's going to be a big opponent. I definitely think that the Ironmen are peaking at the right time, showing it here in round one, and definitely can take a lot of momentum to face Pekin in week two. Definitely, and Gavin, just a few more scores before we go back to a quick break. Two of the scores that we want to mention right now in the mid line night conference Dunlap down a big at halftime to Highland the Eagles came in the game number 15 seed in the south bracket in class 5a they trail 43 to nothing at halftime so things not looking good for the Eagles down near St. Louis and for Washington another mid-alignee conference foe for the Dragons they are down at 21 to 7 to Bremen up in Midlothian in the south suburbs of Chicago, but certainly plenty of time for Washington to come back and try and continue their six-game win streak. So keep an eye on that game as well. But also stay right here in Pekin. We'll have more halftime coverage coming up. I'm Jonathan Michael alongside me, Gavin Russell. We'll take a quick break and come back with more highlights, scores, stats, and analysis. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. The time is now. Parkside Fit. Started, stay motivated, and reach all your health and wellness goals. Take advantage of our expanded fitness equipment areas, group fitness classes, and sports activities. Stop in for a tour today. Parkside Fitness in Mineral Springs Park. It's time for the big fall clearance sale at Vonderheids, and that means up to 80% off balance rolls and remnants. That's huge. Plus, you'll get 18 months interest refinancing and free installation on select carpets. When you visit Bonderheide Showroom, you can register for your chance to win an awesome backyard fire pit. With carpet as low as $1.18 a square foot, you cannot miss this huge fall clearance sale. After more than 75 years, Bonderheide is still the place to go. Be the first down to book your bathroom remodel and be entered to win our drawing. We're doing a big giveaway to kick off our new remodeling division, Home Enhancements by Mushanti. The first 10 homeowners to book their bathroom remodel will be entered to win tickets to the Bears versus Packers game December 4th at Soldier Field. Now is the perfect time to tackle that home renovation project with our 0% financing options. Call today to schedule your free estimate. Let's go Bears! Are you ready to choose your future? Get hands-on training. Take off in your career in as little as nine months. Are you ready? We are. Choose your future. Change your life. Midwest Technical Institute. Find your fun with the Pekin Park District. Veterans Memorial Arena isn't just the place for skating lessons, but boys and girls can learn how to whip, flip, and boogie with tumble dance programs. Find your fun and register online at pekinparkdistrict.org. Welcome back to a rowdy Pekin Memorial Stadium here in Pekin, Illinois. For, back for more halftime coverage here on CSM. I'm Jonathan Michael. Next to me is Gavin Russell. And Gavin, we were talking about some scores around the area. We touched briefly on Washington right before the break. But again, they're down 21 at 7 at the half. What do you think that the Panthers can do in half number two to become another mid I team trying to move into round two of the IHSA state playoffs? Well, again, for everywhere that Pekin, or rather Washington, has gone from this year, starting off so slow, every Everybody, I think, kind of countered them out early. They've gotten red hot here at the end of the year, so kind of do like their season, a slow start to the game. Maybe you pick up in the second half, 
trying to find some momentum. We know Washington's been really good on both sides of the ball. They've been really good, especially on defense these last few weeks. They have been stout. They've put a couple shutouts up. Uh, Washington, it's been nothing short of amazing. They just got to find that magic to make it happen. And it starts again with those big players. Defensively, Garrett Cox, Carter Prina can make things happen. Offensively, McQueary, Jake Stewart, A.J. Jones, and company can get it done. So if you're the Panthers, find some magic in the second half. You're only down two scores well in that game. Definitely. And for the other local team playing tonight, we have Beardstown and Eureka. Eureka, the Hornets scored two quick touchdowns after going down 6-0 to Beardstown. So Eureka, nearing the half, they lead 14-6. We'll take a, another quick break here on ClutchSportsIL.com. Again, don't go anywhere. Time winding down for halftime. We'll take a quick break and come back with more on CSM. Find your fun with the Pekin Park District. Veterans Memorial Arena isn't just the place for skating lessons, but boys and girls can learn how to whip, flip, and boogie with tumble dance programs. Find your fun and register online at PekinParkDistrict.org. Be the first down to book your bathroom remodel and be entered to win our drawing. We're doing a big giveaway to kick off our new remodeling division, Home Enhancements by Mushanti. The first 10 homeowners to book their bathroom remodel will be entered to win tickets to the Bears versus Packers game December 4th at Soldier Field. Now is the perfect time to tackle that home renovation project with our 0% financing options. Call today to schedule your free estimate. Let's go Bears! Are you ready to choose your future? Get hands-on training. Take off in your career in as little as nine months. Are you ready? We are. Choose your future. Change your life. Midwest Technical Institute. It's time for the big fall clearance sale at Vonderheide's, and that means up to 80% off balance rolls and remnants. That's huge! Plus, you'll get 18 months interest-free financing and free installation on select carpets. When you visit Vonderheide's showroom, you can register for your chance to win an awesome backyard fire pit. With carpet as low as $1.18 a square foot, you cannot miss this huge fall clearance sale. After more than 75 years, Vonderheide's is still the place to go. The time is now. Parkside Fitness in Pekin has everything you need to get started, stay motivated, and reach all your health and wellness goals. Take advantage of our expanded fitness equipment areas, group fitness classes, and sports activities. Stop in for a tour today. Parkside Fitness in Mineral Springs Park. Welcome back to Pekin. More halftime coverage here on the way again. Thanks for joining us here on this chilly Friday evening. Gavin Russell, I'm Jonathan Michael, and Gavin Pekin leading 37 to 14. They started out hot. Plainfield Central came back with a touchdown. Got it back to within a score. Pekin came back with a score. Plainfield Central countered. And then Pekin had a couple really big plays in that second quarter that gave them what is a 23 point lead now. So comfortable three score advantage for the Dragons. But what do you think that Pekin has to do? in half number two. Well, they just got to keep the foot on the gas pedal, and I, I think that Doug Nutter realizes that. You know, again, you saw at the end of the first half, you got two seconds left. They take a timeout, you know, easily could just take a knee or let the cl clock expire. They opt to try to run one more play. So in the playoffs, you don't want to leave anything to chance. Keep the foot on the gas pedal is, I think, the biggest key for the Dragons. And I guess if I had to go the other side for Plainfield Central, you got to just find a way to stop the bleeding. I know that's really hard to do when you've got so many different players to focus on for the Dragons, but definitely you need to try to stop the bleeding. Definitely. And for Plainfield Central, how do you do that? Do you maybe go to the run more? Do you go to the pass? The passing game has seemed to work a little bit. Vado has been pretty solid at quarterback. He's made some good throws and kept the ball away from turnovers. So which way do you go? Do you maybe try and chip away or go for the big shots right out of the gate? I would say go for the big shots. I don't, again, can't leave anything to chance in the playoffs. Definitely got to try to go for it right now. Definitely. Well, we will take one more quick break. Don't go anywhere. I promise this will be a thrilling second half here on ClutchSportsIL.com, CIProud.com. We'll be right back with more after the break.
Welcome to the grand opening of the new Uftering Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. All this month, we're dealing on rows of jaw-dropping Jeeps for Jeep Adventure Days, serious Dodge muscle, and new Ram trucks are tough as nails. Don't miss the grand opening of the new Uftering Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in North Beacon. Be the first down to book your bathroom remodel and be entered to win our drawing. We're doing a big giveaway to kick off our new remodeling division, Home Enhancements by Mushanti. The first 10 homeowners to book their bathroom remodel will be entered to win tickets to the Bears vs. Packers game December 4th at Soldier Field. Now And welcome back to Peking, everybody. Larry Larson, John Camosa in with you. And getting started in the second half here in a few moments. Peking well out in front of Plainfield Central, 37 to 14. Thanks for joining us on your Friday night. And John, this one could get really ugly really fast. But Plainfield Central will receive the second half kickoff. Yeah, luckily for them, they do get to get the ball back right out of the start of this third quarter but you have to make something happen you got to get down there you got to get a quick score just to gain some of that confidence back and catch up into this game because right now like you said Larry it could get ugly they turn the ball over Pekin gets it again they are more than capable of scoring and surpassing 40. Again 37 to 14 in favor of Pekin thanks for joining us tonight clutchsportsil.com or ciproud.com our partners over at WMBD. Clock reads 12 minutes, and we are about ready to go. Joko, uh, John Michael, and Gavin Russell discussed it a little bit at halftime, but quick key to the second half for both sides. Yeah, I think with Pekin, just continue to play your game. Right now, haven't really had any problems in the offense, haven't had any problems in the defense. So just continue to come out with that mindset. There's still two more quarters to be played. Let's keep following our game plan. Right now, that's been working. For Plainfield Central, a little bit of sense of urgency. Still a lot of time in this game, but got to get a touchdown and, most importantly, have to make some stops. Miley Hansen will boot it away. Two players back deep to return. Godert and DJ Pearson. Two names that we called a fair amount in the first half, especially Robert Godert on those big plays. Hanson, line drive kick towards the sideline and on the sideline, out of bounds. So favorable field position coming up for Plainfield Central's offense. And John, when you look at a score like this, 37 to 14, you might think that the stats are a little lopsided. Not really the case. Plainfield Central has been productive at times on offense, their total offense 192 yards, including 158 through the air. And that's 158 passing yards to Pekins, 65. And they just tail them a little bit in total offense, so they're still putting things together. Pekins just had the upper hand of getting some big touchdowns. First drive of the second half belongs to Plainfield Central. And Chase Veda, the senior quarterback, leads his men onto the field. Zimmerman beside him. Veda chucks it deep, and it's picked and dropped. Connor Drowns goes from doubtful with maybe a broken ankle to back into the ball game, and he nearly had a pick. I mean, what a, just a tough player goes out there, really, Twisted that ankle wrong. He's got to get tended to. He comes back in later in the quarter. And then right there starts out the second half, tracking that ball down and almost intercepting it. That's a resilient player. An incredibly resilient player on a team with a lot of resilient players. Godert in motion, gets the carry. Jets forward and he's blasted down by Shaman Handigan. Ball Third and medium Golden. coming up. On the stop for the Dragons, Jamon Hannigan. See it. A third and six situation if Plainfield goes down to down the down air down. here. Third, down. Third and six. 
Zimmerman still in the backfield. Pearson in motion. Veda rolls right out of the pocket like he so often has been tonight on the sideline, throws it into the sideline. Looks like it could be a three and out to open up the half, but I, I'm sure this is four down territory. That is. And he did have Colby Williams downfield there. He got by drowns for just a few seconds, but that would have been an extremely tough throw, especially on the run off his back foot there for Veda. So it's going to result in another punt from the Wildcats. Not what you want, but you got to put some trust in your defense. Wildcats need something from everybody if they're going to stage a comeback in this one. 37 to 14 is the score in favor of the home team. Chris Baker puts that one on the sideline and out of play. So Pekin will take over right around the 40, their own 40. And John, what are you expecting out of this Pekin offense in the second half? We saw a steady diet of runs to start the game. You expect more of that here? I think they start out at least these first two, two or three plays with the run. Might throw the ball a little bit, but the run has not failed them yet. I think the Pekin's going to just keep to that way they played in the first half. I could be wrong, though. They might mix it up, go to the air a little bit more in the second half. First and 10 from Pekin's 48, a little bit closer to midfield than expected. Play action. Jordan chased out of the pocket, throws it into Pekin's sideline. And he did find a teammate, but that teammate wasn't in on the play. Hudson Nutter with the catch. Doug Sun. Second and 10 coming up. John, there's the Pekin offensive line, and talking to Doug Nutter yesterday, he said up front is where it starts and ends for us. And that offensive line has really delivered tonight, and the defensive line has as well. Sprecker gets past the offensive line and carries two men towards the sticks. Third and short coming up. But what stands out the most to me about Pekin's offensive line is they only return one starter from last year's team, and that's Elijah DeGroote. Yeah, we talked about that Monday during our podcast show, and you know, you see all these players that fill up the box score. It really starts with that offensive line that opens up these holes for your running back. So many teams across the area just have solid lines that is able to let their star shine, and that's what Pekin's really done this season. Hard count from Jordan, a whistle and a false start against Pekin. That didn't go as expected for the Dragons. So now maybe you go back to the air. Third and eight now. And John, I think that's a, a football altruism, right? Especially at the lower levels, high school and maybe to a even a smaller extent college. Whoever's got the better offensive line or defensive line is usually going to win. Jordan rolls out, zips it to Bo Benassi to move the sticks. Benassi able to come back on that one. I go to his knees and snag it. That was a great catch. Finds his favorite target. 11 yard gain on the play. Ball on the that Jordan Benassi combination. Almost like a Jordan Pippen combination, you can say. First down peaking. Into Plainfield Central Territory, Kanye Tyler gets the carry, and he's knocked down at the 35. Daniel Hollis plowed him down. And I think the biggest thing, John, it's really early to be talking about clock management in the third quarter, but for Pekin, at this stage of the game with this lead, you got to keep the clock moving. Yeah. You know, that's one thing they have in the back of their minds. They want that clock to keep ticking. And I think they'd feel a little bit more comfortable with another touchdown. Tyler dances in the open field, past the sticks, before Gage Leffler stops him. And, John, whenever you get Kanye Tyler in open field like that, you jump and it gets your attention because he gets there so fast, but when he's in the open field is where he's most dangerous. Yeah, 
Just a opposite side of Sprecher, where Sprecher will run right through you. So will Kanye Tyler, but he will also just go around you. He'll spin, he'll juke. He, he's just very swifty out there. Flag flies, and that time, Pekin indicates that Plainfield Central jumped, and so do the officials. So it's first and five. The clock is ticking down. Yeah, Pekin's really got to like this spot they're in now. They can go back to that ground game. and Larry, they put another one on the board potentially here in this drive. Plainfield's really in a hole. Sprecker up the gut. Knocked down initially by Philip Carlton. Still a nice gain. About three, so second and short coming up. And if all goes to plan for Pekin, I mean, they can really go the rest of the game without throwing. Yeah, that's a great point. And when they put another one in there, they got to feel extremely comfortable with the lead. Even the lead right now, they're still sitting in a good spot. Jordan looking to the sideline for the play call. Hollers to his offensive line. It's a pitch to Sprecker. Cuts back inside to move the chains. But a flag is down. We'll see if this one comes back. It's holding against the Dragons. Holding penalty against the Dragons. So Sprecher will come out, and we've got an injured Wildcat down on the ground. So the officials take a timeout. And we will step aside for a brief timeout here on Clutch Sports Media. Welcome to the grand opening of the new Uftering Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. All this month, we're dealing on rows of jaw-dropping Jeeps for Jeep Adventure Days, serious Dodge muscle, and new Ram trucks are tough as nails. Don't miss the grand opening of the new Uftering Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in North Beacon. Didn't know Spider-Man was in the house tonight. Among others, rooting on Pekin. Huge home crowd here tonight at Memorial Stadium. Who knows, maybe Spider-Man's rooting for Plainfield Central. I don't know. Yeah, definitely a lot of costumes out here getting close to Halloween right around the corner and dressing up as their favorite character and also watching their favorite team play a really sound playoff football game. What are you going to be for Halloween, Joko? Do you have a costume picked out yet? I, I don't. I, I think I might just be a broadcaster, you know? That's a good I, one. That's a good one. Myself. I didn't I didn't think of that one. Kanye Tyler dragged down near the line of scrimmage. Third and long coming up. How about your favorite childhood Halloween costume? Oh, there was so many different ones. I I used to just steer towards Batman. I liked okay. Batman, Superman. Tried I was true. Really little, you know, maybe like a clown. Had my face painted. A clown. One of the big noses, the red nose. And did, 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 a lot did, of different did, did, did. Jordan chased out of the pocket on the run. Look at those wheels. And he slides down for the first down. Maybe Scott Jordan can be a track star for Halloween. First time we've seen his wheels tonight. And Pekin keeps on marching. How about a dinosaur? An inflatable one at that. I gotta say, I'm disappointed I haven't seen a dragon yet tonight. That's, gotta work on that, Pekin. Gotta work on it. First and 10, ball on playing field central 12. Tanner Sprecker charges into the line, minimal gain. I think my favorite childhood Halloween costume, there are a few of them, Brian Urlacher naturally growing up a Bears fan. Yeah. I think my favorite athlete related one was Brian Wilson, former San Francisco Giants closer. I got a fake beard and everything and trimmed it all up. Figured I'd bring that up. World Series opening up tonight. 
We've got some competition to go against. Jordan rolls out. It's another designed run, and Thompson pulls him down to make it third down. So I'll say with you know Halloween coming up in the World Series, you're going to sport the, the fake beard again and go for Bryce Harper? Or oh, that's <laughs> that's a good one. Kyle Schwarber. All Kyle Schwarber may be a personal favorite. I don't know what I'm going to be. I think that's maybe not up to me and more up to my girlfriend. But decisions, <laughs> decisions. <laughs> Third down and seven. Give left. And it's pushed backwards. Ball carrier there was Shaman Handigan, his first carry tonight, one of Pekin's reserve backs. Brings up fourth down. I think uh, maybe Chain Gang would be a good Halloween yep. costume. You know, get a few buddies and carry around some, some football sticks. Yep. Pekin's going to go for it. Jordan towards the corner of the end zone for Houston. You got him. Robertson hauls it in. And Houston, we have a touchdown. Could that be the dagger? And how about the pass there from Scott Jordan? Just floats it right over the defender. What a nice sliding catch and peeking. They are rolling. Beauty of a ball from Scott Jordan. Miley Hansen. With a kick through the upright. Say, hey, speaking of Halloween costumes, Doug Nutter's daughter was Miley Hansen last year. That is awesome. Hard to top that one. Hansen, a folk hero around Pekin. Legend still growing. Only a junior. Part of an undefeated Pekin squad leading 44 to 14. And we'll take this opportunity to thank some of our great sponsors tonight including Zach Butler. Welcome to the grand State opening Farm of the new Upstream Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. All this month, we're dealing on rows of jaw-dropping Jeeps. For all your insurance needs, give Zach a call, 309-347-3115, or visit Zach online, sfbutler.com. And we want to thank all our good neighbors around the Peoria area, Jody Brown, Zach Butler, and Jake Weston. Got you covered in all directions, Peoria, Pekin, and Washington. John, you could argue the most important part of that drive, not only peaking, putting up points, but chewing clock. Yeah, now we're down to 4.42 left in the third quarter. That was just a great drive from Pekin to eat away at that clock and come out of it putting Plainfield Central in an even bigger hole. Now the question is how do you respond? I think I just heard some fireworks, John. It, it definitely <laughs> sounded like some big fireworks. I think they're excited for all these scores, celebrating a little early in the third quarter. Not often you can light off fireworks in the third quarter, but I, I guess Pekin can go there. Hey, car rev in its engine. <laughs> we're, we're getting excited. Hey, a little bit of everything. Yeah. Or maybe that was a motorcycle? I'm not sure. How about people having a bonfire in their driveway across the street? Shot of the night from our crew. Well, earlier on before the game started, they actually ran out of pork chops. I wonder if they have some backups provided over there in their driveway. Hey, we got a call over there. I want a pork chop sandwich. Veda chased out of the pocket. And he floats it away. And there, even though that didn't end in a completion, Joko, that's, that really showcases Chase Veda's ability to extend a play. Yeah. I mean, he's so well out of the pocket, just kind of scrambles, stays on his feet. And, you know, he's, he's very quick and athletic, and able to evade any sacks, but he can still turn it up the pressure on him, trying to get back there and disrupt any of those long throws. They know he's capable of producing. The 30th seed Plainfield Central, the underdog tonight on the road against the three seeded Pekin Dragons. Throw out wide and that attempt is squandered. Godert can't make anything of it. Loses a yard and it's third and 11. Clock keeps on ticking.
Exactly. You can't help but go ahead, Joe. That, no, that's exactly what Pekin wants to see is that clock continue to tick and tick. As Chris Berman might say, tick, 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 tick. I got to work on that one, I think. It's getting there. You could be in for Halloween. <laughs> I have to put on a few pounds for that one. <laughs> Screen pass to Zimmerman. Cuts back towards the chains, and he gets the first down. Good fight from Abram Zimmerman, the senior. Here's your one play you needed to get you some yardage. Fresh set of downs. First and 10, playing field central. Good chance for them to go deep again, perhaps. In desperate need of a score. And then another score, and then another one after that. It'll take a lot of them. New back into the ball game. Jassum, the counter to the left, picks up a few. We have not seen Jassum a lot, but Plainfield Central fans know how much of an impact he's had on the second half of the Wildcats season. You could argue that he's a big reason why they've been able to make the playoffs, adding a little bit more to their run game, teaming up with Zimmerman. Yeah, he looked really good in that week eight win over Romeoville, 41-6, had a touchdown in that game, and one of their predominant backs tonight. Played earlier, just not as much in the second half. Veda chucks it over the middle, over Kulikowskis, incomplete. And John, I think perhaps part of that, as you get some good signs from the Pekin fans, fuel the fire, Searched Google, still couldn't find any competition. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. that's that's a good one. That's good artwork too. Google, Peek, Google looks spot on there. Yeah, peeking on its way to ten or no. Fans remaining undefeated. I think they're trying to make the broadcast, and they did. Veda over to the sideline, incomplete to Kulikowskis again, and it's fourth down and seven. I remember my senior year of high school, our team was not very good. I made a sign and brought it to a game that said, I hope both teams have fun. That was not well received by our football team, but everybody else seemed to like it. Looks like they're gonna bring on the punt crew. I think this is just so much credit to peak and secondary, Larry. Plainfield Central's got a good passing attack, but Veda has not been able to get anybody open downfield. Coverage has been way too strong. Snap back to Baker, runs a little bit. And Kanye Tyler lets it roll, and it's downed inside the 20. As Pekin sets up the drive. And we welcome you into the broadcast booth. Larry Larson, John Camosa in with you. And John, we mentioned the keys to the second half for Pekin. To the clock, keep the ball moving. They did just that. Yeah, I mean, that's something that Pekin's looked so good at in the first half. They come out here in the second half. They get a big touchdown. Pekin's clicking on all cylinders right now. No signs of slowing down. And then their defense, they have not let Plainfield Central do anything. And we walk out of the broadcast booth, at least back to our normal spots, as Pekin walks out onto the field, and those signs continue to make their way around. First and 10 from Pekin's own 14, Tyler hurdles a man, and he's knocked down afterwards. Looks like he almost jumped over the whole defensive line there. <laughs> Shows you that talent. Track star, I believe, as well. He is a multi-sport athlete. I asked him about that earlier in the season. I said, what would you grew up wanting to play? What would you grow up wanting to play? And he said baseball was my first love, actually. So Kanye Tyler was a baseball fan growing up, and then eventually he stopped that. When he got to high school, he discovered that football was really a, a true talent. Jordan was looking for Tyler on the wrong side. Miscommunication. First time we've seen that tonight. Brings up third down. 
So I asked him, how'd you get into track? And he said, ah, I don't, I don't love track, but I just got to compete. I like to compete. I'm a competitor. He's pretty good at it, too. He's won a number of Middle Line Eye Conference medals. Yeah. He's, you know, shined on the, on the track scene about as much as he has on the football field. And with that type of speed, I mean, it's, it's no wonder he likes to compete. He is a winner. They're down in nine. Well, it's coming, play action. Jordan chased out of the pocket, chased up the middle, cuts back. Jordan making it happen, past the sticks, back into the seam. How about this run from Scott Jordan? We don't see him run a ton, but he almost wanted to take that one back himself. Looking like Michael Jordan with the Euro step, cutting left and right. Like Justin Fields Monday night for the Bears. <laughs> <laughs> we can only hope he looks like that again this this coming Sunday, week. Yeah. Cowboys, who do you like in that one? You know, I'd love to continue riding off that Monday night win. Cowboys are a tough team. It's it's going to be a tough one. I don't we'll get my see. expectations too high there. Jordan, the give up the gut to Tanner Sprecker. Pyle still moving, and Sprecher escaped it for the first down. Wow. John, I thought he was wrapped up. <laughs> he's one of those guys, you, you, you take your, your head away for a second, you think he's getting wrapped up for a tackle, and he just finds a way to crawl out of that. I mean, it takes him four or five defenders sometimes. An incredible effort from Sprecher. Peekin, well out in front in this one. It's time for the big fall clearance sale at Vonderheide's, and that means up to 80% off balance rolls and remnants. That's huge. Plus, you'll get 18 months interest refinancing and free installation on select carpets. When you visit Vonderheide's showroom, you can register for your chance to win an awesome backyard fire pit. With carpet as low as $1.18 a square foot, you cannot miss this huge fall clearance sale. After more than 75 years, Vonderheide's is still the place to go. Tonight's broadcast brought to you by Zach Butler State Farm in Pekin. For all your insurance needs, give Zach a call, 309-347-3115 or online at sfbutler.com. The hometown kid, hometown insurance agent. And brought to you by all our State Farm agents around Peoria, Jody Brown, Zach Butler, and Jake Weston. Jody in Peoria and Jake over in Washington. And John, looking at the graphic on the screen there, Pekin is a quarter of a way, quarter away from its first 10 win season since 2001. Previously, they've had four 10 win seasons, three in the playoff era, all under head coach Dale Patton. It's been a while. Yeah, it has, but they have put together just a really impressive season and they're not done yet. They are well on their way here in this opening round game, Pekin looking every bit of 10 and 0. Sprecker gets the first down carry after his incredible first down run on the final play of the third quarter. Second and four. Sprecker in the backfield, Jordan with the hard count. Jordan to pass. Over to the sideline towards Bo Benassi. Did he bring that one in? He did not. Joko digging into the stats a little bit tonight on the rushing side of things. Tanner Sprecker, 20 carries for 173 yards and two touchdowns. Kanye Tyler, 11 attempts, 51 yards and a touchdown. Kanye Tyler with 60 receiving yards and a touchdown on that side of things, too. Yeah, it's just been spread out between three great players. Connor Martin getting in there too with that nice run back. So many different key players for the How drive. about a reverse? Ramez Watson cuts up field for the first down. Just as you mentioned, Connor Martin, he got the handoff, but not for long. Peaking opening up the playbook. I think late in this game, especially with the lead, we might see some new faces get some touches out here. 
there from Watson. Peaking in no rush. 44-14 on their way to 10-0 in the second round of the IHSA playoffs for the second straight year. They await the winner of Hananiga Normal Community. And we heard that score at half was not close. Jonathan Michael and Gavin Russell brought that update. Sprecker still on his feet, carrying four, five men with them before he's wrestled down. A flag is down on the play, though. Almost had to pick him up to get him down. Another score update on normal community, Hananiga. Community is throttling Hano, 44-13 in the fourth quarter. Face mask against Plainfield Central gives Pekin even more yardage. Final score from Highland. Highland 50, Dunlap nothing. Bremen crushing Washington as well, 35 to seven in the fourth quarter. Local teams not faring too well. Eureka over Beardstown right now, 28 to six though, on the small school side of things. First and goal for the Dragons. Here's Kanye Tyler. Did he get there? Yes, he did. And again. Third touchdown for Tyler. What a day. It's a 50-burger for the Beacon Dragons. Three touchdown night for Kanye Tyler. He has risen to the occasion and then some. The snap, the hold, the kick is good. 51 to 14. And John, you look back in this game and where exactly things went wrong for Plainfield Central. They were in this game at one point. People tuning in in the second half may not know looking at this score. But if you ask me, it goes back to that safety from Braden Beckham. Yeah, you know, at that point it was 14-8 in the game. They're getting a lot of momentum off of that touchdown and then the safety. Then you make it 16-8 from there. Pekin continues to just go on their run. And really, too, the run back by Connor Martin, huge momentum shifter. That really put Pekin up front. They never looked back since. Should say that was a kick return for a touchdown. Bottom line, Pekin getting it done in all phases of the game tonight. Offense, defense, special teams. Do want to mention though, no turnovers for either side. Yeah. So it's largely been a clean game. Penalty's not a huge factor either. Which is always good to see. Hansen boots it away, it's muffed. Recovered and stuffed. Number nine, Ashton Gibbon on the kick lock coverage. That's the effort we've seen all night from Pekin special yeah, teams. Yeah, they got back there in a hurry. Put them in another long field situation, but Pekin just with a really big lead here. I think for Plainfield Central just to come out and try to get another touchdown and prove to themselves they can score on a defense like this, but right now that has not been the case. Plainfield Central likely in the final 10 minutes of its season. Chase Veda back on the field. Chased out of the pocket. Can he turn the corner? He gives it a chuck and it hits the turf. John, looking ahead to next week, assuming that normal community hangs on over Hananiga up north, things get tricky with home field advantage in the second round of the playoffs. Viewers may be familiar with this, but it doesn't all automatically go to the higher seed. If a team has not hosted a playoff game yet, so if the road team wins its first round game, they get to host in round two. If both teams have hosted, then it goes to the higher seed. So next week's matchup likely at normal community. 
Pass floated out to DJ Pearson. Pearson hurdles over Aiden Houston for the first down. And that's where, you know, Deacon head coach Doug Nutter said, you know, when we talked to him, they're not looking, it's one game at a time. You know, you don't want to get overconfident. At this point, this game is pretty well wrapped up. But on the road at Normal Community, this Ironman team, if they hold on for this win, they play in a great Big 12 conference this year with the likes of Centennial, Normal West, Peoria High, so they're very experienced. First and 10 for Plainfield Central. And Normal Community, six and three regular season. They had a bit of a down year. Veda looking for Godert, well past him. Second down and 10 coming up. Big 12 conference champions last season, if I stand yep. corrected, and this year, just a couple what, of things didn't fall into place. They've made the playoffs, what, 20-some straight it, years? Yeah, yeah, at least 22, 20 or 22 straight years. Right, definitely in that vicinity. But just the consistency of that team every year, next man up mentality, even with the departure of your seniors, haven't missed a beat. Who knows, perhaps we'll see them next week. Coverage plans to be determined. Second and 10. Veda looking for his favorite target. Williams and it's picked off by Houston. Houston's fifth of the season. And you see the complete dejection from Colby Williams on the turf, slamming his hands. He can't believe it. It's all coming to a close for Colby Williams and company. Meanwhile, Darth Vader and the Pekin Dragons have a lot to celebrate. They're fine with playing villain. First and 10 for Pekin from their own 40. A chance to just keep running that ball. Still eight. Eight minutes and 57 seconds left, left in this game. Pekin can try to get down there and score again. Really put this one out of hand. Give up the gut to Kanye Tyler. And he's brought down after a gain on first down. There's Doug Nutter, and you see him wearing a visor there. That's not the visor he wears on Thursdays. Every Thursday he wears a red visor and if you look close enough, it's covered in signatures. And Coach Nutter has a tradition. After every interception in a game, the player with the interception signs the visor. So he's got this visor sitting on his desk in his coach's office, and it's barely red anymore. <laughs> it is covered in black Sharpie every which way. He wears it every Thursday. I asked him, when did that start? He said he's been doing it as long as he can remember. So a little extra incentive for every team turnover. Aiden Houston will get to sign that visor for a fifth time. A lot of interceptions on there. First and 10 for Pekin, Kanye Tyler on the first down carry. As that clock continues to run now, they can just really take their time and pull out this first win comfortably. And this is only the first step, Joe Co. Of course, it takes a lot to get down to Champaign. Kanye Tyler making it look easy, going all the way to the end zone. Flag flies though. We'll see what the call is if this one's coming back. Now it looks like it is. That'd have been his fourth. Ball carrier with Kanye Tyler. Maybe a block in the back call, Joko. And it is. So it's coming back. But the point I was trying to, or question more accurately, I was trying to ask. It's a long road to get champagne. That's Thanksgiving weekend. I, I haven't been making my Thanksgiving plans yet. I don't know about you. You know, it kind of comes into play later. But if you're going to make a run, you need everybody to be healthy. At what point, if you're peaking, do you 
rest your starters in this game. Yeah, I mean, with 51-14, I'll see how this possession goes. You know, if they do, in fact, get in the end zone one more time or if they you know, have to punt, I'd start getting some backups in there right around the six-minute, five-and-a-half-minute mark. 51-14, that would be quite the feat. I think you want to stay healthy. We did see Connor Drowns, you know, earlier take a bad fall that ankle. You don't want to see your star players getting hurt before next week's game. Certainly not. You need everybody all hands on deck. Tyler gets it again. Plunges forward. Not as fun that time. Brought down short of the 30. So Tyler's touchdown run called back would have been his fourth tonight. If he can keep that clock ticking. Final score from up north in 6A. Not sure if any of our viewers are interested in that, but of course CSM 815 calling this game. Grays Lake Central defeats Belvedere North 28 to 27. An incredible comeback for Grays Lake Central to come back and beat North on the road. They were down a score going into the late stages. Pekin looking for a flag as there's some extracurricular activity after the run from Connor Martin, but they don't get it. Third and long coming up. Sometimes this late in a lopsided game, you might not just get a little call like that. Looked like Daniel Hollis was maybe letting out some frustration on Blaine Thomas, the center. And you, and you, you gotta be, I mean, it's, it's win or go home and obviously this is gonna be the last game for Plainfield Central. It's, it's tough for the seniors especially. Jordan towards the end zone and it's dropped. Nearly a touchdown for Bo Benassi. Came a fingertip away, brings up fourth down and long. Fourth and 11, Pekin's gonna go for it here. And John, now looking ahead to next week, I wanna make a point on Pekin's schedule. They have not had a close game since week five against Morton when they won 14 to seven. Since, it's been 55 to 13, 63 to 18, 49 to six, and 50 to six. Here's Tyler just out of reach. Jordan walks off the field frustrated, but can't be too frustrated. Leading 51 to 14, Plainfield Central takes over. And we take this opportunity to thank our great sponsors tonight, making this great coverage possible. Zach Butler in Pekin. Give your local State Farm agent a call, 309-347-3115 or online at sfbutler.com. And all our good neighbors from State Farm around the Peoria area, Jody Brown in Peoria and Jake Weston in Washington. That normal community game has gone final. So Pekin will likely await the Ironman, or the Ironman will await Pekin, I should say. Semantics. Hand off to Zimmerman. Chugs towards the outside before being wrestled down by Cam Hodgson. Ironman against a dragon, who would win? <laughs> Man against the dragon. Well, he's he's got his armor, right? He's got a. Are sword. we talking like the Iron Man, like, like or Iron, Iron Man, Man or an Iron Man, like a, you know, a sword and yeah. Iron Man would probably, would probably a win, dragon. right? Yeah. But if we're talking Iron Man, like Iron like, Workers, like, like, like medieval, or <laughs> hmm, I don't know. I, I think that's a question for normal community, right? I would assume any help would be appreciated there. Hand off to DJ Pierce. Pearson, body's banging. Got close to the sticks. And he moves the sticks. First down. Well, now I'm anticipating this, you know, weighted matchup between an actual dragon and iron. I think it would be entertaining. I don't, I don't think we can make that happen. Not much. We don't have that much TV magic.
one interesting thing about this matchup, Plainfield Central High School against Pekin Community High School. PCHS versus PCHS. Veda on play action, throws it up the seam over Pearson. Brings up second down. You went to a PCHS. Yeah, yeah I did. Peoria Christian. Former basketball star, John Camosa. Baseball. Baseball. <laughs> yeah? Didn't play basketball there, but you don't have a football team. The height could fool me. <laughs> Clock stopped for now at 448. Pekin trying to put the finishing touches on this one. They give to Zimmerman, and he's going backwards. Tanner Sprecker leading the charge on defense along with his fellow linebackers. Plainfield Central, their offense looked pretty good out of the gate, but Joko, they have not scored since 8.07 in the second quarter on that Philip Carlton one-yard run. Long scoring drought for the Wildcats. That won't win you many football games. No, they haven't had that really big play. Both of their touchdowns were just goal line plays. Veda finds Zabinski just short of the chains. Bring up fourth down, and Plainfield Central will go for it. Our compliments to Plainfield Central, though, because the effort has been there all night, and especially in a game like this, win or go home, you get to the end of the game, it's lopsided. It would really be easy to hang your head, get frustrated, commit a lot of penalties, maybe an unsportsmanlike in there, and just not try to sum it all up. But they have. The effort has been there all night long, and that's compliments to the Wildcats and their coaching staff. Yeah, and they're still playing hard. You didn't play you know, the whole regular season to get to the postseason to not give it your all. And even being down 51-14, they're still out there trying to make something happen. False start call. So that'll back them up five yards. Looked like Bobby Chase in the offensive line getting in there. Chase not a starting offensive lineman, but the senior getting some blows here in the last few minutes. as is his classmate, Chase Veda, and Abram Zimmerman in the backfield. Veda, pressure coming, chucks it out of bounds. And Pekin's defense gets a nice ovation from the home crowd for what could be the final time tonight. And what an effort it was. Early, it looked like it could have been a shootout, Joko, but Turned out to be a shootout, but only for one team. Yeah, it turned out to be the shootout for the hometown team, and they put up some big numbers, surpassing the season average there, and just an all-around effort from Sprecker, Kanye Tyler. But there's one thing I can tell you, Larry, is that if next week they travel on the road to normal community, you know this hometown crowd's going to travel with them in bulk. That is only a short drive. One of the more local 7A matchups that Pekin could draw. Give up the gut to Blake Youngren, who had a big week last week. And Pekin's big win over East Peoria. And you look at 7A, and that's one of the biggest things with Pekin. If they play well enough and get a home game, it's such a huge advantage because you got to sit on a bus for two hours to get there, unless you're a normal community. And next week, Pekin will go to normal community. And that's only what, about 35 40, yeah. minutes from Pekin? Yeah, about 35, 40 minutes. Yeah. Here's Youngren. Youngren once again on the carry. Gain of a few to bring up third down. Clock ticking under two minutes. And Larry, too, you look at their schedule and you, you see you know, they had week two against Belleville East on the road. You know, 33-22 win at Dunlap. 
you know, 28-19 win, and then at Morton, 14-7. So they've been tested on the road in the three games this year. You know, a couple other ones were lopsided when they traveled, but teams are going to give it their all when they're, you know, the home team hosting you. So normal community peaking, that's a game that's going to be exciting. I think that's going to be one of the best games next week in the second round. I would agree. Jet sweep to Connor Martin. There he goes again. And he's bumped out of bounds. Remove the chains and likely put this one on ice. 13 yard gain on the play. Ball on the 15 yard line where it is. First down, Keaton. Other finals around 7A, Moline defeats DeKalb 21 to 13. And Yorkville is crushing Libertyville, who Pekin beat last year, 33 to eight in the fourth quarter. So the winner of what will turn out to be Moline and Yorkville next week will play the winner of Pekin and Normal Community. That's probably hard to think through in your head. We don't have any sort of visual for that, and we do apologize. But hey, it, you visualize that bracket in your head, maybe write it down, piece of paper, get creative. Scott Jordan and the Pekin Dragons in victory formation. I think it's gonna be one more snap, Joko. No, uh, that'll do it. The Peak and Dragons roar their way to 10 and 0 for the first time since 2001. Peak and makes a statement to open up the 7A playoffs. 51 to 14, your final score. And if you're coach Doug Nutter, couldn't ask for a better effort out of your team tonight to open the 7A playoffs. Dragons looked good, really good. And on the other side of things, Plainfield Central, a valiant effort, effort Joko. They came out and they were in this game from the early going, but just wasn't enough. And their season ends at five and five. And it's nothing to hang your head on. They had those tough losses. They were able to bounce back in the last two weeks of the season, get in the playoffs at five and four, but you run into a team like Pekin, it's tough for anybody to beat him, which they have not been beaten at 10 and 0. He ran into a tall task and the Dragons prevail. But an all around great season by Plainfield Central. Nothing to be ashamed about here tonight. A great effort and you wouldn't expect anything less from Plainfield Central, a program that has fought its way into relevancy again up north of here, led by head coach Robert Keene and the rest of his great staff. Some Hall of Famers on that staff, Jeff Johnson, the defensive coordinator, as well as the offensive coordinator, Terry Kent, two Hall of Famers on staff for Plainfield Central. They will certainly be back next year, but a big class of seniors just played their final game of their career, and it's always a somber moment. But for Pekin, They'll have at least one more game and they will hit the road next week to take on normal community. Hoping for an interview on field from Gavin Russell here momentarily, perhaps. And John, one of the great traditions for Pekin after every victory, all 10 of them now, they've done the same thing Dragons all pile up at the 35 yard line, rock back and forth and wait for Doug Nutter, who's probably gonna get knocked down yet again. He got knocked down in the first half and he's probably gonna get tackled here. It's always exciting to see and they've, they've done it a lot. Hey, hope to do it so even some more going in further into the playoffs. And Doug Nutter at midfield, our cameras didn't catch it, but a great shot. And chatting with Zane Zadie, a member of Plainfield Central, giving him a hug. Great show of sportsmanship from Doug Nutter. And here come the Dragons. They didn't want to wait any longer. Well, you know they're excited, fired up. 
team effort. Total team effort tonight. Pekin improves to 10-0 in grand fashion. Top performers tonight, Joko. It starts with Kanye Tyler, who scored three touchdowns, two on the ground, one in the air. But Scott Jordan, he didn't throw it a ton, but when he did, he was excellent. Two touchdowns, 82 yards. But Tanner Sprecher, 199 yards on the ground and two touchdowns for the big fella. Yeah, it was really impressive. And, you know, something that he's done all season of just running right through defenders. We saw how many guys tried to bring him down. He was taking three or four defenders with him and just steamheading his way forward. But that was a great effort from Sprecher tonight. Peeking in that huddle, and Gavin Russell is down in that huddle as well. And now they sprint the other way and talk to their fans. And we're going to hear from Gavin Russell, who is standing by with Kanye Tyler right now. Uh, I... <laughs> Gavin, you're on, buddy. Hey, Gavin. I mean, we came off slow, and uh, we had to, uh, I had to take a speech about that at uh, halftime. I had to let him know that we can't be doing that. Well, we can't put on the gas to be finished, so that, that's all that matters. For sure, and you take a lot of momentum in week two, going to play normal community. I mean, what's that challenge mean to you guys? I mean, I've been, I've been waiting to play normal community. They're, they're a great team. Uh, I got a few buddies on that team, and I uh, know it's going to be a great game, so I can't wait. How about that peak in defense tonight? I mean, coming out strong, holding to just, you know, 14 points. I mean, that was a great effort. I mean, we just had to do what we had to do. I mean, we've been dominating for, for the last nine weeks, and I knew we'd come out and get the job done. So what do you say to the boys' post-game speech? Hey, we're going to keep working, and we're going to keep going, because I promise we're not slowing down. Awesome, Kanye. Thank you. Have a good one. That was Gavin Russell alongside Kanye Tyler down on the field. Thanks to Gavin. Great job all night on the sidelines. And congrats to Kanye Tyler. He'll hustle and join his teammates and slide right into that team picture. Flawless form. Fire Pit Nation having a great night tonight. And what an effort it was for the Pekin Dragons. As we welcome you back into the broadcast booth to wrap this thing up. And Larry Larson, John Camosa, one final time tonight. Thanks for joining us. And Joko, I think this game could have gone a lot of different ways. Obviously, every game can. We were talking before the game, and I think the defense for Plainfield Central was the biggest emphasis going into the game. If they could come out and play to their full potential, this game could have been a little bit closer, but I think that's more indicative of how good Pekin played rather than how poorly Plainfield Central played. Yeah, when they needed to make a big stop, it had to happen right after one of their touchdowns to keep it close within the game, which they were early on, but then they gave way too much room to Pekin. Pekin gets a little you know, whiff of that, and they run away with it, which they have for 10 weeks, and it's been really impressive what Pekin's shown, especially tonight. Really impressive victory. Kanye Tyler, you heard from him. We're not slowing down anytime soon. Like we said earlier in the broadcast, if you want to make it to state, if you want to make it to the end goal, it's a long process. It's a long season. You think nine weeks is long? Well, the run all the way to Champaign takes a little bit of time. And I think you look at Pekin tonight, only one injury, and they put up 51 points and really dominated their opposition. They're going into next week in, in really good shape. Yeah, if you look at their regular season, they've almost gotten better and better each week. They've learned from certain games, put that into the, the next opponent. Tonight, as far as offensive and defensively, look like one of the best games they've played all season, and it couldn't have came at a better time than the postseason. And the final point I will make about Pekin, this is their sixth, sixth consecutive blowout win. Maybe their fifth. Morton win back in week five was their last close game. So five straight blowout wins. Normal Community, on the other hand, end of things, has played in a lot of close games this year in the Big 12 Conference. Uh, do you think that comes into play next week? Yeah, I mean, you, as I touched on earlier in this broadcast, I should say it was around the late third, fourth quarter, Normal Community's in the Big 12. They've seen Peoria High. They've seen Centennial, Normal West, team that like to run the ball. They're going to see Pekin. I'm sure they're going to have to prep and be ready for them, but 
equally the same with Pekin. They've played in a good middle line at conference. I think we're going to have a great game next week. It is going to be an epic Central Illinois high school football battle. Stay tuned. Maybe we'll be there for some coverage, maybe not. But either way, it is going to be a thriller that you may want to watch, especially if you're a Pekin Dragons fan or a Central Illinois football fan. But that will about do it for our coverage here tonight in Pekin. We do want to take a moment to thank our entire crew. Jonathan Michael, our producer tonight. Joseph Messenger at the controls, our director. Excellent camera operations from upstairs. Rodrigo Perez, Teddy Ball, and Thatcher Zaleski rounding out our camera crew upstairs. Paco Alonzo on the sidelines running social media. And for our sideline reporter, Gavin Russell doing a great job tonight. And one more time, we do want to thank our sponsors from State Farm. Got to give them a shout out. Would not be possible without them. Zach Butler, State Farm in Pekin. For all your insurance needs, give him a call, 309-347-3115 or visit him online at sfbutler.com. And all our area State Farm agents that have partnered with us all season long into the playoffs, Jody Brown in Peoria, Jody Brown online, Jody Brown Agency. Dot com is her website. Zach Butler in Pekin and Jake Weston over in Washington. Jake Weston insurance.com. So, John, any uh, any final thoughts? Yeah, I think going forward for Pekin, they're fired up. You heard Kanye Tyler. He's got some friends on that normal community team. I'm sure they're looking forward to that matchup, and he's going to get his guys fired up, but they haven't missed a stride in 10 weeks now after this win. I think Pekin's ready to try to make a statement here in central Illinois. And one game at a time, like Coach Doug Nutter said, but the Dragons are looking really good. Pekin with a massive statement win in the first round of the playoffs tonight. One more time, the final score. Pekin, the three seed in 7A, 51. And Plainfield Central ends its season 5-5. Five and five. They score 14. For my partner, John Camosa, this is Larry Larson saying thank you for watching tonight on Clutch Sports Media. So long, everybody.